Hey guys, it's your bear boy host Hito starting up the whole entire thing, I guess. We gotta undo the cameras and make sure that they're working. But hello, welcome to the Retrogade. We are up to another season three episode, and today we're gonna be talking about Atlas Games. So of course, you know, we always have some amazing guests on the show. So we're going to start with our first guest today, which is our good, great, awesome friend, a.k.a. one of the best persons for waifu hunting. Uh, it will be Matt Big Fat. And Matt is doing something currently. So our next guest is the <laughs> pony. That no, was, oh, oh. I was, I was, I was oh. debating you the entire time. Debating me, of course. <laughs> I guess. Last surprise. There we go. <laughs> Alrighty, yes, it's me. <laughs> I was literally just leaned over to the left. Just, <laughs> just just over over. It's Matt Big Fat time again on Hito's podcast. Oh boy. Matt if you don't here. know me, I'm a wild cracker streamer. I am Twitch's worst nightmare because my body pillow is right in the back there. <laughs> that's not, that, that's true. You guys. That's true. Nice it is. You guys. It is the unhingedness. Oh wait, wait for it. The clip of a lifetime. Damn. <laughs> oh, thank you for the shadow. Oh yeah, so word. There we go. <laughs> if you guys are not following Matt, you totally should. Uh, Matt is definitely going to be joining us for a big project soon, which is this gym of mine. Um, it's going to be a bonanza. Woodman, who's also in our chat right now, is also a part of our thing. Uh, he got the normal gym now because Matt got the fighting gym. I did. Yeah, yeah. So perfect trade off. Perfect trade off. For all in fairness, normal's like my third favorite type, so that's pretty cool. That's yeah, fair. See what you do. That's fair. Lopany's there. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. Hey. It's fair. <laughs> Next up <laughs> is... Whoa, you really fucking threw darts at me there, buddy. <laughs> I didn't throw any darts. What are you talking about? <laughs> but anyway, next up is our tubby wubby uh, pony waifu, Mecha Dragon. Did you just reference the song? Yes, knowing? yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. But you don't know that's an actual pony song. I know it is uh, actually. It I actually do know it's, this. It's, I love that song. I, I, I miss the Rimmers Dash Present series. That's one of my favorite things in the fandom. <laughs> but uh, yes, hi, I, I'm back. Uh, usually I have a pony avatar with me, but they're playing games, so you just gotta deal with my ugly face right now. So. <laughs> See. It's fine. I, I'm an actual guy. I, the secrets reveal. Shame, shame, shame. Uh, I'm here to talk about some the zany war of Atlas. Yeah. This collection is very broad, as you know. Yes, very interesting. Actually, very broad. the list of games brought up as a cheat sheet. Oh look! There see, look at that. There you go. Oh yeah, there's a clip of me. There's the clip. There is. I, 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 I don't know how long ago that was. <laughs> I actually, I got this. It doesn't look too. Oh, this this shovel. This looks like shovel knight, but I'm probably it wrong. Okay, okay. See, okay, maybe my audio does need to be work on. But what? 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 what, what yeah, now he realizes. Uh, <laughs> he he messes me every time after he streams. Was my audio good? I'm like, no. <laughs> Damn it! And then I just cry. And now it goes two hours gone. My life. There was one stream where your audio was really good, but then something fuckled up, and it wasn't good the next time. But I digress. <laughs> also, if you're not following Mecca, please give them a follow. Yes, I promise I'll be back streaming when you he know. No, I have no excuse. <laughs> I will. I'll, I'll finish. I see we're game, Matt. I will. It's uh, a fun game. Go play it. And, um, <laughs> but anyway, we're talking about Atlas today. So, guys, um, what hey, are hey. some things that you expect of Atlas to make in their video games? Uh, Japanese society. You're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> You're um, not wrong. I, depending on the, on the developer, if it's an American one, just general games. If it's their own games, waifu, and craziness and stuff. So we're expecting waifus in Japanese society, which basically yep. can be Never summed up in just one sentence. Um, okay. <laughs> very sad. Alice's earlier career, again, looking at the list of games, Alice's earlier career is a lot less homogenized in their bread and butter, what they got used to. So, again, we do have a lot of interesting talking points to discuss. Yeah, we definitely do. I forget, they also um, published the most various uh, Virtual Boy game, too. Jack Frost, I think it's called, right? Jack Bros. Jack Bros. Oh, right. Which is technically a part of Jack Frost, Jack in a Frost. way. 
Um, we we love Jack Frost. Oh yeah, he's like the Pikachu of that list. Demi fiend in the streets. Mara in the sheets. <laughs> yo, oh. yo, Demi fiend got that swag though. Like on God, just wear just wear just wear black shorts and some sneaks. Shirtless, abs out, and just tattoo yourself. Easy. You know what? That's fair. That is the uh, that is the Sans look also. Oh, and he just de he slides and just decks people. Like damn, oh. what a giga Chad. He's my favorite SMT protagonist by far. Definitely. All right, so. We're going to start with the first winded question, which is, what was the first Atlas game you remember playing? Okay. All right, who goes first? Mecha, you got the first shot. Ooh! I can eye up in my mouth, okay? No. <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure there are some previous games that I played that I didn't even know were Atlas, but I can remember vividly, um, per we bring this game up later, Trauma Center. Um, it was like a large game for the Wii. And I think I I borrowed it one time at a at Blockbuster. You guys remember Blockbuster? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I do. Are, are we are we are there kids who don't know what that is? Um, Cause there I are, but much. don't worry. I think everyone here. No, knows. we're not that old yet. Uh, no, are, I, but... I I I love that game. I never got to finish it because I got stuck in one mission where it's like you do like three different surgeries. Yes, that one that one is notoriously session. difficult. That one is notoriously not yeah super fun. <laughs> I remember. I, I think it was like very anal with the time and. <laughs> Again, I only had like a week to beat the game. I do want to get it oh, again. Oh yeah, a week blockbuster. Yeah, of course. And then it's okay. Was, it'll, be, um, it'll be on Xbox Game Pass, Elvis. It'll be. I hope. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> and uh, no, but uh, um, yeah. Obviously, I wish they'll bring back the Trauma Center for the Switch or something like that. People think they might not because people are really sensitive with health things out. But I'm sure. It well, it's, it's also it was also stuff. always a niche series. It never did gangbuster numbers. Can we also just and talk we, about the fact that? It's, yeah, go on. Can we, just, can we also just talk about the fact that it was not really a medical game in some cases? Because I mean, it was an anime medical game. Thank you. I like, love, I love the it was exaggerated. Friend, I love how our friend CTK always explains the game where, like, it's simple at first, but then later on, you're basically fighting, like, an army of cancer things or something like that. And it's like, it's we called have this stuff. Yes. <laughs> That's how you explain it. Sorry. That's okay. It's, it's fun. But uh, it's a fun series. Uh, like I said, we'll probably talk more about it later throughout the podcast. But mm -hmm. um, after that, I played some of the Persona games. Of course, 5 was a big one because it helped me my sanity when looking for work back then. And playing Strikers at the moment, as my friend will make fun of throughout the podcast. But um, <laughs> besides any miscellaneous other games I played, that's most of Atlas games I played in the past. Oh. Well, to be fair, he only asked you on your first one, but just fine, Elvis. We, oh, we, we, we sorry. Like you it's okay. We like you talking, but he just asked on your first one, your first experience. <laughs> but don't worry, we'll yeah. definitely cover all other up. experiences later. Definitely. Oh, so we gotta wrap it up. Okay. <laughs> wrap, it up. <laughs> wrap it up, guys. It was a fit, it was a two minute show. Goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> we started all over again. <laughs> Hit the rewind button. <laughs> um, Matt, you're up next. Okay, okay, so my first Atlas game where I knew was Atlas, because there's going to be a disparity yep. later where I didn't know a game was Atlas, but my first game where I knew was Atlas. So, in 2012, I was a senior in college, and uh, my buddy Phil, uh, we he was a JRPG fan also. He, we were actually doing playthroughs of Tales of Phonia in his dorm room. Good times, good times. And Tales of Phonia too. Good times, good times. Um, he let me borrow his copy of Persona 3. Three uh, for the PS2, and he vowed by this game. I'm like, okay, Phil, hey, I finally get to try a Persona game. I've heard on the internet that these are niche and underrated, and I played Persona 3, and I hated it. <laughs> I played the you. first few hours, and I, Elvis, we're gonna get on to you, Elvis, don't defend games you never played. So, um, it, it, Persona 3 is a rough game. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna, gonna go too on an opinion now, but Persona 3 is a rough game. It is not age well, and don't let anyone tell you it's a good game. It is not. As someone who blindly played in 2012 for the first time, it was not a fun experience. And I didn't like it, so I obviously just gave it back to him. I didn't hate him or anything, but I'm like, sorry, dude, that game was not for me, not my cup of tea. And then I didn't play another Atlas game until 2019, which is finally when I got around to Persona 5. And boy, howdy, did I fucking love it. <laughs> and and then and then a whole bunch, and then I have more experience with Atlas games later on, but that's, I, I swore off Atlas for seven years. And then, and then I'm back. <laughs> that, that'll do it. Uh, I will say this though, um, I did like Persona 3, it's just I didn't like the gameplay, I love the story. Okay, that's perfectly fair. That's the, thing. Like, the story is fine, the story you can d in, indulge in just, in just looking I at. I feel like, because 
Persona 3 was one of the first games I played in the Persona series. Um, the thing that got me frustrated was the fact that I didn't feel like I had any control in the battle schematics, and that's the issue that messes up a lot of people in Persona 3. So you basically have to just have dummy stats to make sure you're ready to kill everyone, and that's it. Yeah, That's kind of yeah. what I did to like breeze through the game. I dummy statted everybody. To, to, put a, to put a blanket on this whole opinion, I'm looking forward to the remake. I'm looking forward to that rumored remake of Persona 3. Same. It's going gonna, it's gonna to over-eclipse its original version. There we go. All right. First Atlas game I ever played, and that I still remember to this day. Um, I played Robopon for the Game Boy. <laughs> and, for okay, those, uh, and for those of you who don't know what Robopon is... Um, it's a Pokemon ripoff where Atlas tried to make Pokemon, but with robots. And um, are those the robots made of the little discs? No, uh, robots no. made from batteries. Oh, okay, okay. Did you play disc and soft disc? Video, disc or and so before then. No, I knew about it way before then because I actually had the cartridges when I was a kid. When I was still in middle oh. school and I was still collecting Game Boy Color games, I don't know why I was doing it. I was, I, I, I'm a collector, but those I got mean, stolen yeah. from me. Um, that oh. was another game that unfortunately got stolen from me because it looked interesting with the little battery on it. Because, um, yeah, the game was really tall for a Game Boy Color game and it had a little hatch. Now, here's the messed up oh. part. Sort of like Pokemon Pinball. Yeah, Pokemon it Pinball. had like I an IR sensor, like right? Because yeah. he could do stuff with it. Something like that. that. It was still flat. It wasn't like the fat one that you got from yeah. like uh, Pokemon Pinball. It was kind of close to being Kirby's Tilt and Tumble, but taller. Oh, okay. Um, but, but tall, dark, and handsome. Okay. Tall, dark, and exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Robopon was definitely a fun game that I definitely enjoyed. Um, it was an interesting take on Pokemon. Um, CDs were actually software you added to your um, your Pokemon, your Robo, your Robomon, <laughs> your Robopon. And what happened was altogether um, the software adds techniques and magical skills to them, along with equipment, just raising up their attack power and all this other stuff. Your whole journey is essentially just trying to become Robopon master and winning the tournament. And funny enough, I barely played enough of the first game the one that really got me was the sequel there was a robopon 2 and just like in pokemon yeah. fashion that they've done with both of these games they made different versions of the games so what for was the differentiating subtitles between the two versions so the t so here's the thing the first robopon didn't have two versions it had three okay at three oh, wow so, so did pokemon to be honest <laughs> and here's the problem with the fact that they had three only one of them released in the u.s and that was the sun version the sun they they made sun like yep. 20 years like 16 years before yep what? yep <laughs> Unbelievable. yep I'm also leaving. can we also talk about the fact they also had moon in japan and star they actually oh, wow. made the stars version the legendary third version <laughs> oh my god pokemon fans would be molding oh, right now. i remember right? there was like rumored for like a while it was like that... pokemon stars is coming out yeah, yeah, yeah. i didn't know that fun fact oh my god pokemon fans would be disintegrating cat right now right that fucking emote i always post yeah, I'll, I'll post the emote in your server no like that's the <laughs> whole thing gotta remember oh no and then wait get this so when two came out they only came up with two versions and this was for the game boy advance and this was called the cross version and the ring version which were very oh. interesting titles i was like cross and ring huh now we're talking <laughs> maple yeah maple exactly exactly i even knew it was on the game boy advance <laughs> that's true Holy shit! Yeah, no. it was sun, moon, and stars. What was I really need to? What was the second generation's three subtitles? Oh no, that's what I was saying. The th um the second game only had two, which was cross and ring. Oh, cross and ring. Okay. Yeah. So okay. not as great, but kind of diff, very different actually, which was interesting. The second one was. Right, a I was too busy losing my mind. I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> which here's another thing to go into cross and ring. They completely scrapped the whole make it look like pokemon but now make it different so two was actually a lot more better than the first one because now i don't feel like i'm playing pokemon i feel like i'm playing something a little bit more different it still has the same battle tactics but it, it's it, it definitely feels a lot more different now i know i need to hydrate after that maple trust me i'm right here <laughs> i think i'm out of water already unfortunately so the thirst is real guys thirst. but yeah that was my first uh atlas game 
and then I found out about Persona 3, and I loved the story, and I kind of just found out you just have to be overpowered as shit to get through the story, and don't worry about anything. Also, raise up Fu- um, raise up Fuka quickly. Well, that's with any RPG. If you over-level, you're gonna easily beat it. Exactly. For the most part. So I had a, me- I had a mechanic to help me beat the game, which was, uh, find one of the strongest creatures and keep spamming it over and over again until you leveled up. And there was a strategy to make sure the char- the enemy didn't come after your ass. So, yeah. Ass. Thank you, Tartarus. Whoo! Um, alright. So, next question. Um, what was one at- <laughs> I already know the answers to this one because y'all already y- y'all already gave this one. What was one Atlas game you were disappointed with? Oh shit. Okay. <laughs> Who's first? Matt, you were technically first. Oh, yes. <laughs> you go first. Oh Matt. boy, so have you ever heard of a game called Persona 3? We're mentioning for the first time tonight. Persona <laughs> 3. Uh not a good game. Uh it has arduous it, it, it uses its social it, it, all Persona games use their social stats like you do outside of battling and outside of the dungeons and they are not taught to you well you are confused you don't know what to do you don't know how to use the time well the reason why Persona 5 is so popular is because they dialed it back a little and they made it a lot more accessible it's the Street Fighter 6 of, of Persona 5 of Persona games, because I know Street Fighter 6 is doing that now, currently being wildly successful as, as of this moment, as of this recording. But anyway, Persona 3, yeah. So besides not getting the social stats down and not really, like, grasping the concept of using your time... I mean, I understand how to use time well. I'm good at time management in real life, but... I wasn't really like it wasn't the, the game wasn't really clicking with me on how to do it in the game then i get into tartar some battle and it's a turn-based jrpg where you can't control your allies by any choice whatsoever it's so weird and then it's like yeah and then i'm and then i'm like slowly getting out of the game and i don't really super care game made a really bad first impression <laughs> i only played a few hours <laughs> this is fair all right mecca you're next um I guess I'll give two examples, even though I, I didn't beat these two, but I'll still say them anyway for the content. Um, I was going to act this earlier in the show, but I, I even find time to squeeze it in. Does anybody remember how Persona 1 was on those old PlayStation Classic editions back yes. then? Yeah. yeah, but back then it was back only then, four years was, ago. Yeah, I so have I think, it. I'll tell you your game note. Uh, I think I played it, um, a good chunk of it on the PS1 because I was like, oh, we can play Persona 1. Great. I mean, might as well. And, and, and that was like the only good thing on the PlayStation Classic, and uh, I don't, I don't, I don't I really like it because I think the first was more like kind of like fantasy star where they like, could go through like mazes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't like I think by in the first one they grabs the whole thing that everyone loved about Persona, which was the combat or the again the waifus or the battle system and stuff. Um, so that uh, that one was a little bit disappointing, but then again, pl- um. Persona fans will tell you the first one's kind of rough. It's like Battle Network. The first one is the roughest to get okay, through. Okay, I mean, well, Battle Network 1 is still wildly playable compared to Persona 1 or yeah. 3. I, oh, my, but, yeah. but, it's a, but I get what you're going with, but easy there, partner. We're going <laughs> to shoot you for that in Texas. Oh, okay. I, I, We're all Phoenix I, I, Wright fans. We all know that joke here. I kind of want to say... Uh, my snowball kids but i think if i say that uh, mike will kill me because i played uh, snowball kids a, a couple of times at the conventions and it's a tricky game to get used to snowball kids you guys ever played that with the kids and the uh, snowboard? well yeah I, I mentioned a little early we meant we were mentioning yeah. in the pre room yeah 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 I, I only played like one lap of it at like long Island retro again and like, you have to like game. you I can't have just it. like go straight to the next lap you have to go to like the little the, the little thing to get to the top of the mountain it's it's a very tricky uh, racing game to learn and stuff, so yeah, those are my answers. And then my watch Mike comes to my house, is like, what you say about my snowboard kids? <laughs> what you say about- I'm gonna come to your house when we don't play Persona 5 Strike. Now he's gonna kick I'm my butt. It. <laughs> it's all just a chain reaction if he's going to each other's houses. We're not gonna be home to meet our attack. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It's like, like it's like reverse social like, where, thing. Where'd Elvis go? Um, <laughs> where'd Mike go? He went to go, kick, go. He went to go kick your butt. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. Oh jeez. So here's one that really did uh did very terrible for me, and I realized, holy crap, was that actually a game? Did mm-hmm. I actually remember this? What? Um, I don't like the Devil Summoner series that much. Okay. Uh, it, I never. I don't really know them per se, but yeah, go on, go on. So Soul Hackers, aka Devil Summoners, 
Oh, so happy okay. to consider. I didn't really get a chance to touch on it as much as a kid, but I remember I had it for the PlayStation, and I think I I can probably attest I was a dumbass kid, so I probably didn't know what I was doing, but it definitely didn't leave like a good, it didn't leave a good impression for me. So I kind of just ended up, I I I, I okay. There's the one regret that I did as a kid. I frisbeed the game out the window. You did? Were you that bad at the it's game? A, You're like, nope. shit. It was uh exactly. it was two dollars when I bought it. Oh, okay. And I was like, you $2? know what? If I ever want the game again, I could purchase like ten of them, okay? With just a twenty dollar bill. F this game. And then I just threw it out the window and that that was it. It just it never came back. How much is it nowadays? probably very expensive and i'm probably just going to end up adding it to my playstation classic and just you know yeah i will actually I say look that up. we'll we'll see if it was a skill problem or the game was actually that terrible you know mm -hmm. yeah i also want to bring up a, a brother company that's worked with uh atlas quite a while have you ever heard of red entertainment yeah i've heard of them red entertainment. also also I, helped I out with robo pond off the top of my head but i i i I uh, know them. I heard their name. The only okay. reason why Red Entertainment got brought up was because of the fact that they also helped out with Robopod, but they also uh, did a game with uh, Atlas, which was called, I'm trying to remember the name, uh, Thousand Arms. Oh, which was that an, sounds familiar too. It should. It was on the PlayStation and it was an RPG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's another game that I actually have on my list to play. It's in my backlog. I've seen playthroughs of it especially through uh dg as well because she's shown it off that game so many times along with uh star ocean and lunar but definitely red entertainment's been like in this stuff and doing their thing still mad about robopon though <laughs> it will never go you, away. maybe i'll get a remake or something so if we nag Alice, do it. Yeah, Alice trade summer show this come this this summer. That's fair, and also let's talk about the fact that Red Entertainment made Fossil Fighters. I'm looking at oh. the list now. They also made Bonk too, which is interesting. I thought that was just just solely uh, Hudson. Hudson mm -hmm. and Atlas was another like pairing together as well because they also work well. So Hudson uh, got Thanos into the never ending vault of video game companies. Yeah, it happened. Oh, oh damn! Yeah, I just I got that joke. All right. Almost side is for Hudson. <laughs> Pour one out for Hudson, guys. Just okay. Now that we're done crying about Hudson, uh, next question: What is one character you love in Atlas games? And Ooh. Mecca, you're the first one. I am. Yeah. <laughs> damn. Um. So, we were talking about, about any Atlas game? Any basically? Atlas game. And I, I don't mean to interrupt, but do you mean like specific, like individual character or character archetype? No, just character in general. Like your favorite character, character in, in an Atlas game. I, I, I'm afraid to say one from Persona because that's like a cop out, but. No. You don't have to be a cop out. It's a podcast for a reason. Exactly. Say your honest to God opinion. Uh, since I kind of love Persona 5 as much as everyone else here, I guess. Uh, Morgana is my favorite because, you know, um, I, if that's okay to say, because you know, he's a cute I, I, character so. I think I think he's hella underrated. No, I, I actually, I'm, no. I'm actually gonna co-sign that with no, you. No, no, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, I, 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 I can co-sign with you. Right. He's hella underrated. Someone who didn't play Persona Five for two years until after it came out, and I saw the fan hate for Morgana. I didn't really get it when I played it. But go on, go on, King, say your piece. No, I like it. I, yeah. I like Kim and the characters for reasons, and and uh, he said that nice, it's cute. You, no, you, you shut up. <laughs> All right, I was saying, I, I was saying, human being. Uh, uh, yes, I like him. He's he's a adorable cat, and I just want to hug him or something. But if you want an actual oh, no. human character, I don't know. Um, I'm an artist friend is obsessed with that um yeah. character from yeah. <laughs> Send it to the cyberspace. Let me hug it. All right, you got it. <laughs> don't worry, he'll. Yeah. Don't worry, you. Don't worry, Matt. will go inside of Morgana and they'll drive to your house. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, that's my answer. Uh, my favorite is Morgana because he's very helpful. I think it was basically my healer when I played pre five anyway, which was a good help. And he's. I like the bed there on his on his on his 
person person and yeah, like you say, he's very underrated and stuff. People are probably just like more Teddy or something. What a bad. Yeah, to be honest, I, I remember he he once asked me the question if you can have any pet that was like sort of like an animal from a video game, and I chose Morgana myself because one they can talk, one they can heal me, and yeah, I, I so yeah I, I co-signed that homie. Good good work. But Matt, good work. Morgana's, Morgana's a underrated. human being. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> He's a raccoon. Please, let's use the Persona Five Strikers joke. He's a raccoon. I'm not a they raccoon. Got that from Guardians, did they? I don't know what they got it from, but I think her Sophie, Sophia calling uh uh, uh Morgana a raccoon is fucking hilarious. Yeah, that's my final answer. I have other favorite characters, but we'll be here all day if I just um talk about them and stuff. All right, Matt, you're up next. All right, so I'll. All right, uh, I'll be the basic bitch. I'm just gonna say Joker from Persona Five. Yeah, Persona Five was my big gateway Atlas game. Uh, yeah, it's Joker. He's he's swag. He's cool. It's the basic bitch end for a lot of people, but I mean, he fucking deserves it, man. His fucking voice acting by Xander Mobus is fucking great. And like fucking, who remembers all the arson? Ravage them. Like, come on, it's iconic at this point. It's fair. So yeah, it, it's cool. He's he's fucking awesome. I have like three amiibos of him. One of them is dusty and unpackaged. I mean, yeah, it's it's he's 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 he's, he's fucking cool, man. He's one of the coolest JRPG protagonists of all times, and he gets to star in two main JRPGs: the first game and its sequel. Which, again, I can't wait to talk about so much more later. <laughs> I think kind of hate how the Son of Five falls in that show, but like if the main character dies, everyone dies. I mean, that's just that's, that's just that's just Persona games in a nutshell. Yeah, especially with the enemies that has like the one hit KO. Moves that's also a few like, SMT God. games in a nutshell. We'll get to Demi Fiend and three and other games later. Uh, but I will give some runner-ups, though. If you don't mind, I'll give some runner-ups, though, for yeah. cool characters, so it's not just Persona show. I'm, I'll do this very fast. Uh, Demi Fiend is really cool. I mentioned his swag attire later and how he just slides and decks people in the face. That's that's awesome as fuck. I, I like characters who punch more than characters who use weapons. That's why I'm, like, a Jude fan from Tales of Exilia and shit. And, and well, Makoto herself, too, yeah. when she actually does that. Uh, the doctor from... Uh, the doctor from uh, Trauma Derek Center... Derek Stylus. Derek Stylus is a pretty cool dude. I I really like I really like his character arc over a few of the uh, trauma center games because you get to play as him in the first one and the sequel, which is DS only. Well, I mean the first one was DS also, but you know what I mean. The half the half remaster for second it's, opinion, but you get what I mean. His last name is Stylus. Get the joke. But anyway, yeah. So mention some non persona characters. Yeah, the the, the demi fiend and uh, Derek Stylus are pretty are pretty cool too. I keep them in my mind too. Okay. But we'll be the probably see the 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 that character in Simigami Tensei is our favorite. You know which character? What? You know which, which monster? Oh, I'm you mean about? Mara? You, yes. You. Everyone Quite wants. You. Everyone wants to be a dick today. You did. I, 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 I feel like you have to know about that monster if you're a big Samuel guy. Tensei fan. Listen to, yeah, to quote memes. Woodman and and her and her beautiful way of going at this. Uh, Demi Fiend in the sheets, Mara in the sheets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a very joke. suggestive chariot. Well, 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 jo well joked. A good handshake. Uh, favorite character in an Atlas game. Um, I kind of like Vincent and Catherine a little bit, but also, okay. uh, my favorite character in Catherine is Erica. Okay. Cool. Um, because legit, <laughs> legitimately, um, representation, uh, LGBT representation, and along with that, uh, she kind of, she kind of took someone's V card away. And... Oh. I hate, uh, there's one thing I just hate about is the fact that literally they use the term, oh, but she's a trap. Like, no, no, she's not a trap. She's made this obvious. Just the guy is very fucking stupid and did not understand the concept of it. Oh, she's a, uh, I don't want to say this. She's not a trap. She's, she's trans. Trans, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not looking up now. I would say trap. That's kind of, insane. but I, I just kind of, that's a hard way. Yeah. No, but like, mind you. Yeah. Cause I never say trap. I say tr they're trans. They enjoy I the identity. It in my vocabulary but, uh, too, yeah. my main favorite thing is the fact that, um, this is proof that the person that she made love with loved her for who she is, regardless of the body autonomy. And then after that, I immediately regretted it. And I wanted to punch him in the face. I'm like, you liked her for her. Okay. Calm yourself. Do you still like her? Well, yeah. Okay, then shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, I don't get the point of that. Like, I'm like, listen, you have to understand you loved it. You loved her. You had feelings for her. 
get over it. Also, I just like the sheep in Catherine so much. I would love to get more of those sheep plushies from uh, mm. Catherine. Because, mm. again, having the sheep plushies, I would I just go for a whole bunch of them. I also want to get the plushie for Vincent, who's carrying the pillow in his boxers. But still, I would just love <laughs> the uh, idea of having the sheep. Catherine is a fever dream to me half the time. And I hope I get the high score in the Catherine tournament for LA Retro. <laughs> oh well, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. competing for that one. Hmm. What the cat? What again? Sorry. There's a Catherine yeah, tournament Catherine in LA Retro. Oh. So I'll be that. I'll be actually going off on that one. Cause that's a game I'm skilled at. I have to practice it's again. Look fast. <laughs> I think Joker is in the um, Catherine remake recently. Yes, and yes. It's like a secret chapter or something. Yes, he is. And let's talk about the whole fact that the vibe of Catherine is what inspired Persona Five to begin with. Yeah, kind of, yeah. Its whole vibe was literally like, oh, we want this vibe in our Persona 5 game. Let's just let's just take Catherine and push it to Persona. And there we go. Sure, it's not the whole thing, but the whole the groundwork vi- was basically the made whole vibe with Catherine, is there. right? The whole vibe is there. Hell, even the music from Catherine is in Persona 5 when they go to the movie theaters. Oh, oh is yeah. It? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that factoid. So, uh... That actually goes to my next question. What are some Atlas Easter eggs you enjoy in some of your Atlas games? Uh, Why don't you okay. go first, Mac? I gotta use the rest of them. Is that okay, Hito? <laughs> you know, he, he suddenly had diarrhea. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, You're all good. Okay, okay. I'll go first. Uh, Well... Does it have to be an Atlas Easter egg referencing another Atlas game, or just an Easter egg sort of in general referencing another, like, Sega game? Oh, go for it, because technically Atlas uh, is technically a part of Sega in some yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, of course, the, the main one I like to mention is that in Persona 5 Strikers, in the in the first act, uh, when you uh, when you examine a movie theater, uh, Makoto says, uh, y- uh, Dragon like a Yakuza is playing. I'm like, wow, <laughs> boy howdy, boy howdy. <laughs> and in return, like a dragon... The Yakuza Seven had personified music in his jukebox, so there's there goes Sega swinging around the big old eggplant again. That will definitely. So yeah, that's one. That's one. That's, that's one of my top ones about Atlas Games referencing other Atlas Games again. I'm not a super duper expert on it. But while Elvis comes back, I will mention one fun fact, though. There's a sort of an interesting uh, strike against Atlas. Did you know that Atlas spelled Pocky incorrectly in Trauma Center Second Opinion? Yes. They spelled, yeah, you remember, yeah. <laughs> how, does, how does the company who loves Japanese culture so much misspell Pocky? I was shooketh when I first played Trauma Center. When I when I actually played Trauma Center, I'll get to that later when we, we get on the Trauma Center block, but that was shooketh. I'm like, how do you do that, Atlas? You're literally Japanese society, the company. <laughs> they do that, that quite often. Funny. They do that quite mm-hmm. often. Oh, really? Because um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of misspellings in some of the games that go as well. And but an actual Japanese snack, that's, that's like the one thing you're not supposed to misspell. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, a few things that I remember, uh, <laughs> so, one of the biggest things is, n- um, uh, words, stop it, please. Words are hard. Uh, oh, actually, I was going to answer this one next. Are they spelled Pocky? They use two C's or two K's. I think it was two C's. That, so if I remember correctly, it was like that. Yeah. It's yeah. Well, P-O-C-K-E-Y, no, no, isn't it? No, well, one, no, it's not. <laughs> Atlas. And two, uh, no, we were referring to the fact that while you were gone, I said the fun fact that Atlas misspelled Pocky in Trauma Center 1. Uh, oh, you're right. It's P-O-C-K-Y. God, yes. It. And even Atlas, don't worry, even Atlas <laughs> got it wrong. <laughs> How do they spell it? I think they spelled it P-O-C-C-Y, if I remember correctly. Then again, there's a, there's a bunch of misspelling errors in All Trauma right. Center. So, so Elvis True, but not a Japanese uh, Mecca. Snack, but no, we Mecca. Digress. You're next. Hi. You're next to answer this question. All right. My and fair Easter egg, you, you said, right? Yeah, you, mm-hmm. yeah, your Easter egg from Atlas Games. Okay. Um... Sorry. Uh, but and, give me a surprise an example, honestly, because it's. Can I just can I say that again, or is that weird or something? What? What? Because in Persona Five, there's when you when you do the video game challenges, all of them are like based on different games and yeah. stuff. So yeah, he said I you find that kind of clever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Punch Out. Yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's a, a good one. That, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those video games you play in Joker's room that reference yeah. other video games. Fuck yeah. Those One of them was kind of difficult because I had to like kind of do some kind of weird. It was like a fighting game, Street Fighter thing, and it was like a weird combination name would be do. And I was like, how the hell do I do this? It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one too. Yeah, Law yeah, yeah. thing or something like that. But the references in that were um great. Um, people has a lot of references to like different things because you basically go. See movies, those are references. You read books, those are again references. Mm, um, the cake night rises. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, it was it, so yeah. Like I like I like the little like tidbits there and whatnot. So it's it's it, I think the Pesaki just has like a treasure load of like references and Easter eggs and stuff. Mm. There's yeah word. Uh, there's 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 JoJo references in the second game. Yes, although, like strikers. Yeah. <laughs> uh. So yeah. big one, uh, big Easter egg, uh, big one is in Futaba's room. Futaba has a figurine of Catherine from the Catherine series in her oh, room. Okay. There's also another game, and for one that's out of game, because I can do this one, in Persona 5, there is literally one line that is said counterintuitive the whole time, which is based on a Metal Gear Solid 3 line, which is love can bloom in the battlefield and this is a oh, reference okay, yeah. and this is a reference between big boss and the boss herself this is done quite too often and also <laughs> just another su subtle thing that happened um the amagi in from the fourth game actually makes its way on the event in the events of persona 5 She's regarded as a, and the Amagi Inn has Yukiko, which is basically known as the beautiful girl in Persona 5 on the morning show for Japan. In the news article, they talk about the Amagi Inn, which is from Persona 4. Ah, I see. So that's another interesting one that happens. And I, I personally enjoy the hell out of, like, especially the connected connection for that. Also, let's talk about the quizzes in Persona Five. They have so many references. One of them being yeah, a dude, yeah. one of them being a Dragon Ball as uh, one of the answers. I'm like, no, yeah. no, not a Dragon yeah. Ball. We can't. No, stop it. You can't do this. <laughs> but uh, also, straight up, the world. Yeah, the world. <laughs> the world. But yeah, like, oh, but it was definitely an enjoyable action to mess around with it. But uh. There's also a book in Futaba's room that has the Aperture logo on it oh, from Portal. That's a oh Western God. game. You're not allowed to do that. I'm leaving. Yeah, <laughs> but they did it. You'll see it on the floor. It has like the Aperture logo on it. And I'm like, does she know how to think with portals? Mm. She has to know how to think with portals. There's no, it's no way, no way, no way, not happening. She knows Maybe she's a John Cult fan. <laughs> I mean, she's a big fan, obviously, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of references, and, and Catherine and Persona have like the biggest references in between. They're one of the biggest games in the Atlas library that most people do not get to see. SMT being closely behind it as well. Uh, but all in all together, these are like really good things that are going into place. Also, if we want to go more outside, Morgana is a reference to Studio Ghibli film My Neighbor Totoro. The true, cat bus. True. Yeah, yeah, true, true. I oh oh that makes so much sense now. God dang it. The cat bus. Yeah. No, I understand. I get it now. Damn it. I say it coming. <laughs> no. You never saw it coming. <laughs> Just play last surprise out of nowhere. I don't know if this counts as a reference or a Easter egg, but like, um, I kind of like in Smash Bros. how they ref reference everything with Persona 5 and Joker and stuff. Because even when you win the a match with Joker, um, it shows the actual victory screen, which is a nice touch and everything. Mm. I've won a match with Joker. You can tell that, like, Sakurai really you can tell wanted... that yeah, Sakurai was a, a huge Persona 5 fan during the yeah. of Ultimate. Like, holy like he... shit, he, he treated Joker like a king. Treated he, treated Sora like a king too. True enough. I think of all the I think of all the characters that he developed. Like I think Joker was the one he put in the much love with, and, and, my, and Steve. He's like, who the hell is Steve? <laughs> Steve is like, oh, but like, yeah. oh. 
Right. We didn't, he, but did yeah. he say like in, in his videos, like I I just did it because Nintendo told me to. But for for Joker, like he's like I, I love the game. Yeah. Um. I don't, I'm, I'm pretty sure about Sakurai's uh, persona, but I'm gonna get up later when the time is right or something. And then mm-hmm. finally, here's one other thing that you should worry about. Um, in the stray lamb for Catherine, there are plushies of Koromaru, Teddy, and Morgana in full body of Catherine. Ah, oh, cool. So you get a three... retroactive Morgana reference. Nice. Yes, you gotta get all of them in there. And you, of course, cannot go without saying that, um, we get a lot, and I mean a lot, of a uh, lot of their soundtracks. So it's a very big thing. Yeah, and it doesn't help the fact that uh, the voice actors are just as similar too. So Yukari's voice actor plays the K Catherine, while Risei's voice actor plays the C Catherine. Oh, uh, okay. So Persona cool. three and four play ca- both Catherines. Hmm. Which, uh, it's almost like you're just dating the game in disguise. Yeah, it happens, okay? It happens. <laughs> and, of Catherine, co- and of course, and of course, you can tell. Down- and also, you can play as Joker in Catherine full body. So we play jo- we play Catherine on the Switch or the PS5 or Steam. PS4. Because uh, Catherine full body. Original. The original Catherine <laughs> is on the 360 and PS3. And and uh, Steam, they Steam. never brought full body over to Steam unless uh, unless I'm really mistaken. They they the, only, the only way to play that fully updated version is on PS4 or, or Switch. Yeah, I do have the PS4 version, although I do want to get the Switch version just so I can practice. Because again, mm. I, w- I want to win. <laughs> yeah, they call it Cat. Oh yeah, you're Classic right. On Tragic Steam, Cat yeah, they, yeah, they, they never weird. really update it. It's okay. Well, whatever. I'll just get it on my PS4. It's all they don't own PlayStation <laughs> console. <laughs> but yeah, that was another one. Now. We have to ask this question because if I don't, I'm disappointing Atlas fans in general. Um, True. Who is your favorite waifu? Oh my god. (laughs) That's perfectly fair. Matt, you of course get the first say on this. Oh wait, hold on, no wait, 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 no, because Elvis took a break on the last one. You went first. Elvis gets to go first. No, okay. Uh, Of course, of course, of course. Favorite waifu. Uh, from any Atlas game? Any Atlas game. Any Atlas game. Jack Frost. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Jack I, Frost. I, I believe you. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Um, Petey, because Persona is full of, of, of beautiful ladies. So, take the uh, time. Take a deep breath. Um, hmm. uh, I guess... Uh, I don't want to say Futaba, but I think she's like 18, which is weird. It's fictional but... character, doesn't matter, Elvis. You know, uh, one of them will have you registered, point. but it's fine. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> fictional character, Elvis. We're all people of culture here. Yep. Come on. Of course, good point. Never mind, I take that back. Futaba's my answer. Okay. Futaba okay. is adorable. She is best girl, which is funny, because my I think I, at first said I didn't want to like, pick her, because when, when I first played for Sona 5, but later on, I was like, yeah, she's cute. And then maybe Sai, the, the lawyer at the end of the game. Beautiful, too. Too bad she was not a dating <laughs> option. Sai. She's what? not a dating option, but hey, you said waifu in general. Yeah. It's funny, uh, uh, because the spoiler is here, right? Yeah, yeah. Persona 5, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not that much of a spoiler, but in the end of the game, she gives you some kind of treasure and it's all question marks. And I was like, oh, maybe we'll find out what this is later. And like, we never find out. I don't think you ever find out. I think it's one of the game's mysteries. That is a thing that happens, right? I remember? vaguely remember, vaguely. But yeah, vaguely. okay, fine. Uh, yeah, and for like a non-persona character, I think the nurse in, in uh, the Tremors of the series is pretty cute, but then again, you can't mess up a nurse design. Nurse are hot in general, so... Uh, uh, yeah, Ange- yeah, Angela Thompson. Yeah, basically. So th- those are my answers. Uh, Oh, I didn't know you like Angela Thompson so much. I'll send you some art later. Oh, oh do you do? <laughs> yeah. You're here first, guys. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't know you were a big w- fan w- of Angela w- Thompson. Well, how, well, you, can't say, I mean, you can't say that. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Show us some art. <laughs> I can Joe Boru. It's not a... It's not a no, it's not. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Just remember, you're not on my stream. You're on Hito's stream. You're not on your own stream. Oh, either, no. You so. can, oh, no. You <laughs> can talk about art all you want. We have a lot of Bara classics here. <laughs> But uh, you, well, yeah, well, more specifically that website. And also, I yes. probably gotta give respect to that one character in Persona 4 my friend is obsessed with. Like, he, I can't remember his name. He has his like a name? beanie, so he did that. I don't know, I just want to say his name. 
Some beanie character in Persona 4. I'll get back to you on that. You mean Teddy the bear? No. Are you talking about Kanji? No, beanie. Yeah, I think you mean Kanji. Yeah, there we go. I couldn't remember. The one, that uses, a, the one that uses a chair as a weapon? The chair, yeah. <laughs> no. No? You said beanie guy. The only person I can think of that uses a... That's Persona yeah. 3. You're talking about Shinji. Yeah, there we go. Shinji. Yeah, that character. Oh, okay. Listen. The guy is so obsessed with this guy. I'm like, okay, you find your, you find your, your husband. Good job, dude. Ooh. Ooh. I'm sure you like it too, Hito. Do you? If you knew what happened to Shinji, only you knew. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure oh he my god. You have a nice, respectful life. It's okay, Dragon. I kind of have a strat now. I just gotta. Oh, yeah. Clip here. If only you knew. Oh, rupees. I'll take ah. Indeed. Uh, thank you, Persona Q, All for right. bringing him back. <laughs> uh, I think I spoke too much. Uh, he, no, no, you just, oh, no, you're, you're fine. Your you're fine. Yeah. Matt, Ooh. you're next. All right, all right. So how do I approach this? Um... Because me as the uh, you're the ass the man, pick the one with ass. Well, I, I love well, ass well too. yes, well, yeah, this is too, but yes and yes and yes and yes. Um, I'm gonna be honest. I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna list a few, and I'm gonna. I'm, two of them are sort of tied because one's a playable character and one's not. So I'll leave them directly tied. Uh, in, they're both. They're all Persona Five. Big, big fucking shocker. Uh, for playable characters, Makoto. Uh, well, well, one, she has a nice butt. Two, she punches and kicks. Oh, that's two. Two, two she will. She wears a nice navy blue as part of her outfit, and also her outfit's just awesome to begin with. So yeah, she's by far my favorite party member. Admittingly, I never dated her in any playthrough Persona Five because who I did date <laughs> was Kawakami, the teacher. Let's go. <laughs> Tired, late twenties year old. Let's go. I think I, she's like. No, sorry. I go on. The, her age was never officially given, but it's it's sort of guesstimated that she's about in her late twenties. I was saying because it, I think most walkthroughs would recommend you date her because I mean, of her be, you're, like, you're, you're actually can, correct. If you use the official roadmap of 100% Persona 5 on your first playthrough, you do have to date her because her massage is coming helpful way earlier in the game. You know, happy I endings help. Correct, I had early in the game, I think I also, got that like halfway done. I'm like, why? Also, earlier. in the anime, in the Persona 5 anime itself, she's really close with Joker. There's that one scene where Joker's in his room forging uh, uh, inv infiltration tools before Shido's done. Dungeon, and she's like in his room hitting on him. So even the anime makes it almost pretty much canon that you're the one that she's the one that she's the one. You know, she's like, hey, you know what? Massage anything? You know what? Happy endings do all of the joy there. So you know what? It helps. <laughs> I'm glad you brought up the anime because we mentioned her uh, Mokoto's ass. I was like, that. Oh yeah, there's the also shots the, of her ass yeah, in there's, the there's, anime. There's, you're correct. There is. You're 100. Like, a lot of boobs and butt. Yeah, I was like, this is amazing. So yeah. Anyway, playable character Makoto, non-playable character Kawakami. Uh, uh, third place would definitely be uh, the Dr. Tay Takemi. Of course it uh, I would. I dated her actually on... <laughs> um, I, I actually dated her on my very first playthrough Persona 5. Didn't regret it, but I did eventually, after multiple playthrough Persona 5, I did eventually fall in love harder with other with other waifus. But again, all three of those, phenomenal. Wouldn't, wouldn't regret it for the world. You and Waffles have Let's the same test when it comes to Takemi. <laughs> that was his first go- that was, that was their first go-to. Yeah, so you're bringing up um, dating in Persona 5. Fun story. Um, okay. So I think I was like one day away to dating, um, I think Anna or something like that. On? But on. No, I was either on. No, 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 no. It was Haru because oh, okay. I think I need like one more day to kind of spend the night with her. But it just wasn't on because she rarely ever wants to talk and spend the night with me. <laughs> but this is like um, the day before the game kind of just speed runs to the end, which um. Spoiler alert to anybody who ever wants to play Persona 5, the game basically ends around Christmas Eve, so do everything you can uh, to and, and by that day, so he said. And so I was, I was, I was bringing up Sakurai, because I think that was the story Sakurai said, where like, he had to just kind of like get, um, was the name of the artist again? Uh, he couldn't finish Yusuke's confidence. Yusuke, yes, yeah, that. yeah. He had, was, he, I think he had like one or two things to have to do with Yusuke, but then the game just like, because for some reason, I thought the game was just giving you like, because... I thought it would like, give me like a day, a month or two to kind of wrap up the the Sunday or not. Nope, it no. jumped from like Christmas no. until like February. Just I'm like, wait, wait, what are you doing, game? Wait, 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 hey, I got, I got shit to do. What's going on? Just and then it goes from February until like the spring, and I'm like, all right, uh, go get your your end game items and get the game. I'm like, oh god, you. Can we just game. talk about for a second that 
He's like, remember, guys, everything has to end before Christmas. You, know, you have to end everything. You have to get your date before Christmas. Almost Christmas. Oh, my God. Almost Christmas. Almost oh Christmas. Almost Christmas, dude. I also, I, I also remember, like, I want to just, I think I got to that part of the game. And I just want to go to bed. It was like 2 in the morning. I, I was wanted like, to You're go almost to bed. done. Just finish the game. I'm like, dude, it's 2 in the morning. I want to go to bed. But I did, I did, did Mecha Dragon yeah. said he wants to go to bed? To go to bed? I know, right? Rare footage. <laughs> you, were, rare you, footage you, were, you were different five years ago. Oh my ago. god, I'm happy I got this on footage now. Holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a shiny or something. I know. One in ten, one in ten thousand chance. One in <laughs> one thousand twenty eight chance. Um, waifus. Uh, can we talk about his bottles? Not kidding, no. That's fine. I, well, actually, I mean, you get. I mean, I, I, no, 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 I, I, no. no. In, in, in the tradition of Atlas, there will be no husbandos in this conversation, <laughs> which is sad, by the way. Atlas, give me some that damn peckles, please. Do you know how many times I was trying to hit on Kanji? How many times I wanted to hit on Ey? Yes. Okay. He is indeed Daddy. Daddy. <laughs> okay. I wanted to hit on that so badly and you just ruined every ruined my fantasies atlas damn it anyway uh not important waifus um so my waifu of choice was makoto mm -hmm. yeah in persona 5 mm -hmm. but in persona yeah. 4 my waifu was naoto okay because it was the closest thing to bara or yaoi as i was gonna get <laughs> As, it's true. As, in, in, a, as, in an esoteric way, yes, you're correct. As as fucked as that sounds, I'm like, <laughs> and yet she has the biggest cup size out of all the Persona Four characters, which yeah. is hilarious. Yeah. I find hilarious because the way they find this out is the swimsuit competition, where Naoto oh did not even leave in the bikini, just like, nope, I don't want to be viewed in this way or nothing. Naoto wins. We actually did the measurements in private! Yeah! And then this kind of proved the fact that uh, Kanji finally got some validation there, at least, because he loves Naoto. Mm -hmm. But, um, Naoto was my thing for Persona 4. Um, but in Catherine, I, I, I choose to go with Catherine. And then this, uh, is the, yes. this is the question where it was like, which one? You know, Catherine. Yeah. But which one? <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> Catherine with a K. Uh, I liked her a little bit better because at least she gets on my ass and is like, hey, we need to get this shit. I like a responsible partner, if that makes sense. Um, I'm all for having fun. I'm all for having a good time and everything. But I need someone half the time to tell me, hey, we've been having too much fun. We need to focus on this. I'm like, OK, thank you for like reminding me like. It's a great thing to have the responsible one in a relationship. Although I can also be just as responsible. It's just, it's reassuring to me that I don't have to just be the only one that's responsible. So Catherine with a K was great. And I kind of hated how uh, Laura Bailey Catherine decided to come out of nowhere and was like, <laughs> I'm going to fuck up your potential marriage. Yeah. Yeah. And then spoilers for Catherine. If anyone minds these. Sure. Go ahead. Um, fuck the bartender for setting this up. Although I will say... Oh yeah, I remember. The bartender was the final boss, I think. Although I will say this. Um, if you chose Laura Bailey Catherine instead of the Yukari Catherine, um, I will fuck the devil himself because god damn... I, I will I will literally go for Vincent in that devil form. It was amazing. I'm like He went from he went from string bean to daddy in twenty seconds. <laughs> what the bean. hell? What the hell? I'm just oh oh moral scales, thank you. Uh you know what? Okay, this I makes just... me want to be a bad boy now, just so I can get the look. Let's go. <laughs> I just remember something. Can I change my answer to Sonic Joker? Because technically, in Sonic Forces, you could play as Sonic uh, Joker's Sonic OC. No. <laughs> no, you can't change it. I'm sorry. Because guys, in case you forget, uh, second no, was Atlas. So yeah. We all oh, we didn't forget. So technically, the next fucking Persona game, Sonic can make an appearance. No. Do something. Okay? No. 
Absolutely not, because then I could say Digimon also, because they're part of the Sega umbrella now with Bando Namkai. Oh, Namkai owns... Sega owns Namkai on Bandai now? There's, no, technically, se there's technically a Sega references in uh, the Digimon series now, because they have some sort of weird relationship with it. Namco Bandai, yeah, Namco Bandai is just being friendly with, with Sega, they'll yeah. let them do that. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, they're like the second cousin of the connection, so it works. Yeah. Kind of like Naughty Dog with the Samiak back in the 90s then, right? Yeah. Give or take. Give or take. They were much more friendlier. They were like best friend, so it's fine. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I still would love my husbandos though. Again, give me EY anytime. That's all I gotta say. I would be like, hey, listen, you're a single father. I could be the second daddy. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'll adopt him. I promise. Okay. He's like, but I was a part of them. He was like, He's like, but I'm a part of the mob. I know. <laughs> that doesn't make me less hard. <laughs> <laughs> like, listen, when, when we found out he was a mob, he was like, you should leave me alone. I'm like, um, damn it, I want you more now, because not only do I guarantee that we might have a fortune in this situation, but also the fact that you're hot. Okay, again, um... You could be Mara in the sheets for all I care. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> but yeah. You the, the for Hito now. Listen. <laughs> okay. I'm not crazy, but also I have to think about my future. <laughs> and my future says I will be safe with this person. <laughs> but yeah, um, that is my answer. That is indeed my answer. Uh, I would go with Catherine from Catherine. And which, Catherine, you thought, well, you should have been listening earlier. So, you know, there we go. <laughs> yep, I got it. Um, one of the Catherines. But Atlas Games definitely, like, tickle the funny bone every now and then with a few mm -hmm. out there titles. Uh, let's talk about a title that hasn't been brought up here, by the way. Uh, bring up a title that has not been brought up here that's made by Atlas. Okay. Let me go over to the cheat sheet. So... I tried out the, because there's a few Shin Megami Tensei games on the Japanese Switch Online. I tried some of those. Um, I think If is on there, right? Technically speaking, that's also Persona. Just saying. I'm kidding. No, it's not. No, it's serious, but still. No, Shin Megami, from what I've been told, Shin Megami Tensei is the more adult version of either Pokemon or Persona or something. I don't know. Or both. <laughs> or both. Or both. Or, or, I, 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 is it? I don't know. Because a, a lot of people say, like, if you're tired of Pokemon's crap, you could just play Persona, which is kind of rude, but whatever. People want to talk smack about Pokemon nowadays, unfortunately, but... Play yo it's all better Japanese than Pokemon. And they're all RPG, so good luck playing that game or something. Yep. But, <sighs> talk a lot of random shit about <laughs> SMT. <laughs> and like I said, um... Man, but like, but like, if you if this for I guess the, the audience, if you want to try that out, go ahead. It's not that hard to get a Japanese e shop and stuff. The, this is true. All right, Matt, you're up next. Oh, uh, well, sure. That was my I'm answer. Just... Yeah. Okay. Wait, oh, what? In general. Wait, what? No, no, no Matt could go engine. next. Oh, uh, sure. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give another answer later when you're done. Well, no, give it, just, give it yeah, just give it now. Just give it now. Just give it now. Well, I have to look at the list too. If that's okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Now, okay. Now I'll go. Sure. Okay. Yep. Um. All right. There's a few I can bring up. I, I, I'm. 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 I'm going to leave my number one answer just in just one sec. But I want to bring up. See, they made. They. They produced and made Odin Sphere and and Dragon's Crown. Now those are in my backlog. I got to play those one day. I know. I have the Dragon's Crown art book actually. Fuck. I forgot to bring. I forgot to bring it over to the table. Uh, but yeah, I have the Dragon Crown's art book, so I, I've seen those games in action. I really like the art style. I gotta, I gotta play those. Gotta play those one day. But I guess the game I'm actually gonna bring up that I have played. Now we're gonna really deep dive back. I mentioned this in the waiting room earlier. We're actually gonna talk about the pretty much kind of infamous Friday the 13th NES game oh. by good old AVGN. Now I'm gonna be as okay. a fan of the actual slasher franchise. And, and AVGN, yes, I've actually played that game myself. 
Uh, uh, I won't go too deep into it, but actually, it's uh, AVGN jokes aside, you know, he's always hyperbolic, like, haha. It's actually a pretty okay game when you come around to it. It's actually the, probably the most impressive, like, horror based slasher game on the NES because I have all the merges, side scrolling bullshits. The, the Friday the 13th game is actually interesting. It actually has an AI try and hunt you down and kill you, and you have to kill it back. It, it's actually sort of like asymmetrical multiplayer all the way back from 87. It, when you actually break down the game, Game and like memes aside, it's it's actually kind of impressive what a game it is. Yeah, is it is it arduous? Is it is it esoteric? Do you need a guide for it to like understand how to kill Jason? Yeah, absolutely. It, but but the game, the actual boiled down game itself, it, its parts are actually pretty interesting. It almost reminds me of an of an indie game called Monstrum, which came comes out way later. It's like a 2015 Steam game. But that's a game where it's just you and one person and the uh, one one AI and the monster tries to hunt you down on a ship and it's just you versus him. It, it, Friday the 13th is like a very early predecessor to that. So actually, again, it could be biased talking because I'm, I'm a big fan of that slasher franchise. But <laughs> the NES game, uh. AVGN Jokes Aside, is actually pretty interesting. And uh, sort of worth... Well, if you watch some more videos that are fair towards it, not saying AVGN's not fair, but you know what I mean, he's comedy. If you watch yeah. videos that are actually more fair towards it, you'll actually learn that it's, it's a much more interesting game than just the, just the uh, infamous uh, uh, a light on it makes it seem. Wait, uh, so I catch up, Hilo, can I, can I say one more? Oh, yeah, 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 I'm done. That, that was my answer. Uh, but I do, no, do want to play Odin's Fear and Dragon's Crown. I'm looking through the list. I, I, I kind of forgot they made the A-Train Odyssey series. I, I think I tried to play a few of those in the past. You guys ever played those games, the Train Odyssey? I think only I've heard of them. Joe There's played it. I've heard of them. There's going to be, uh, oh yeah, yeah, I think he has. The Also, the HD collection just re recently released, so yeah. I'm keeping my did, eyes open. Did, did they also play the Mystery Dungeon game? Because I know they had a Mystery Dungeon game too, which I tried, because I'm like, oh, a not book a Mystery Dungeon game. Let's give it a shot. And it was so difficult at the beginning. I was like, can't do this, and then it's returning. It. It's, I like the, so I, I want to get into the series some more. I think they said they're, they're going to release a collection soon, right? I what, Etrin Odyssey? It's already out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, okay. May I, I need some money? I just made it released. Mind my allowance. <laughs> oh! Nah, but, uh, it's a good series. I think, uh, the, the, the point of the game is that, um, you can make your own maps, so... It's kind of like, um... When we made the Fantasy Star, it's kind of like that, where you have to kind of guess where you are or not. It's a... I heard it's, like, super difficult, so... I don't know if it's, like, for the faint of heart or something like that, so... If you just want to give it a shot, go ahead. I... <laughs> It looks it looks fun. Plus, it has good wife was too, and there too. You okay? You want to know something well, very yeah, funny? Does. You want to know something very funny to reference off of this? Okay. What? Etrian Mystery Dungeon are the same people who made Pokemon Mystery Dungeon by Spike Chunsoft. Oh, that makes sense. Spike Chunsoft wow. makes a whole bunch of Mystery Dungeon games, not just Pokemon, but they've also done Etrian. Um, they've done quite often. They even have their own series of Mystery Dungeon games, which. I might actually make that a topic itself in the they, future. They, they, they've done a game called Zanky Zero. I have it always wishlisted on my Steam. I'm going to pull the trigger on it one day. Apparently, they also made the Danganronpa games too, chunks of. Right? Yeah, Chunsoft definitely yeah. did make the Danganronpa games, and uh, I could definitely go into that one on detail. And that's totally not a game that I'm forcing Matt to play at some point. <laughs> I can only play it too. It's like a more action packed version of Ace Attorney from my episode well, online. Yes and no. Yeah. <laughs> Just, yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> I mean, you're solving crimes like doing East Attorney, so I'm guessing. Again, sure. Why not? Sure. <laughs> sure. Um, I just keep... Favorite game for me. Um, so, does anyone want to. No, stop, no. though. <laughs> so, funny enough, I'm with the mic in agreement on this one. I did play a lot of Snowboard Kids. And okay. For those of you who don't know, Snowboard Kids also had a DS game and a few other games that came out as well. But Oh wow, I didn't know about the DS one. But yeah, I will right. say this, um There is a game that I can't stand because they made a card they actually made an anime series about it. Has anyone heard of Beat a Man? Be the Man? Be the Battle man. Beat a Man. Which is oh, a, wait, Battle Beat a Mon? Oh, I always pronounce it Battle Beat a Mon. Beat a Mon, yeah, man? that it's yeah, because it's D A M A N. But they oh, okay, no, I guess so. I always said Mon. I know what you're talking about. I know they what you're talking actually about. Atlas made that game too, and uh, oh, okay, I, I'm just not a fan of it. If people enjoyed Fair. it, cool, but like, no, <laughs> no, uh, but there is one game that I did not bring up. 
which I wanted to save, and we played it on my birthday. We got to watch boxes have sex. We got Cubivore on the list. Guys, oh. Cubivore is amazing. Okay. What's it for? What what console? It was for the game it was for the GameCube. Okay. Okay. I so for those of you who don't know, um It's not on that list. The, the, the Wikipedia is actually slightly wrong. Yep. So here's about Cubivore where we come into play. So if y'all remember Super Smash Brothers, mm -hmm. Melee. Mm -hmm. And you remember the trophies that had like the little box dog and panda. Oh that is Cubivore. No way! That is Cubivore. And, uh, <laughs> like I said, um, Cubivore is basically survival of the fittest type game. You're essentially, like, a newborn trying to basically mutate and evolve and go crazy. And essentially, you want to get all of your evolutions so you can fight the final, final boss of the game. I didn't beat all of- I didn't get all the mutations, obviously, but I did have a lot of time, you know, biting, going after meat, fucking... Keep making children you know it was fun it take, almost turned it off for just a disc jesus christ yeah why is alice game so expensive so, these days here's the thing that game you is know, specifically expensive moment. because that was a test game technically speaking that was also in limited copies so yeah i actually still have my copy of cubivore it no longer works but i can oh, get it fixed uh, okay the other such but the case was stolen because the guy thought that oh the game must be in here and if he sold it for two dollars i would have beaten the shit out of him because honestly that's a 110 dollar game to 1500 newly wrapped up i'm on ebay now just that this is 200 i'm like yep wow that is it is a very insane. very rare game but honestly it's a big stress reliever of a game honestly um not because of the fucking but because of the fact that uh i basically get to go savage and wild in the game and i get to basically say all the stupid things that i thought about when i was playing it because i'm like okay guys we're gonna go over the birds and the bees okay when you want to bump nasties with a box you have to take out both the boxes both boxes mm. must be attracted to each other sometimes Sometimes it'll be one box and 11 female boxes at the same time. And what your point is, is to impregnate all of the boxes. So exhibit A, exhibit B. Can you, surround a, can, can you surround a female box with five male boxes like Piper Parabo? Exactly. It has to be, it has to be one male box and like 11 female boxes. And then everyone gets <laughs> so pregnant. First Piper Parabo. There we I don't go. Know why the game was to fight boxes, not to screw with them. Okay. It's fight and fuck. It's fight and oh fuck. God. Because it's again, fight, fight and fuck Friday night, dude. How do you expect to mutate if you're not, if you're not, you know, getting down? Okay. You can't, <laughs> you can't give birth to the next generation of mutations and evolution if you're not willing to get down and fuck mm. all of the freaking females that you can in this game and then the giant female eats you and then you just reincarnate into a giant into a different animal i don't know man but so me bring up champ we're ruined in here you know he's like we're gonna fuck some boxes tonight like, okay. fair enough i'm half you oh, know no, what i'm I've half i'm half tempted to just give this um to let matt play this game just to see what it's, 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 At the very least, I can always see if it emulates well. Yeah, it, no, it definitely emulates well. Uh, yeah. I would know. I would know. Um, <laughs> my Wii is very powerful. Ah, I see. But yeah, Cube of War, Survival of the Fittest, I would definitely like give Atlas 100% on that one. They did a really good job on the game. Even if it was like a test game and it was limited copies. Oh my god, I, I, I was a stupid kid. I'm like, Oh, mating. That sounds cool. What does that mean? And then I found out mating meant fucking, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> and then you became a man. You and became then, a boy to a mon. I be I, I became I became I became a no. Oh, I became a I became <laughs> cub to bear, and I'm like, oh, okay. I want to do more of oh, that. Yeah, that, makes sense. that sounds fun. And then they're like. So mid conversation, funny. I had oh god, this unlocked a memory. So, I was in my after-school program, and I was talking about this game, and I'm like, you know what, I want to mate in the future. Hey, can we mate together? And then my teacher came in and was like, Keto, uh -oh. what did you say? 
I'm like, <laughs> I wanted to mate with my friends so that way we could like make a fusion or something. Make a fusion. I said this. Dead face. Oh, oh Neptune. I said this dead face with no with no repercussions. <laughs> just I, I don't know what this means, but it sounds cool. I ended up getting a call. They ended up calling my mother. She came from her job, which was like a block away from the daycare center. And basically, she's like, what did I hear about you wanting to have sex with your friends? And I'm like, I didn't say that. I said I wanted to mate with them. And they're like, <laughs> boy, it kind, of, it kind of reminds me of like, I had a similar experience with that when I was a kid, too. Um... I think it was in the bathroom with some other kid, and I think we were like changing or something like that. And it was like, "Oh, I can't wait to see you naked." And then I got so in trouble that day. I was like, "You know what?" My parents were like, "That is a." That was you should never say that ever again. Like, I'm sorry. Listen, this is oh, what man. I have to say. '90s kids always did have the darndest things to say because yeah, real talk. Because we're into we're in, like mind you, me helping kids regardless. Uh, in the view in the past, uh, the kids say darndest things, but they're very scary to think about because I feel like they would actually do it. Kids say the darndest thing in the '90s. Now that was innocent, and this is why yes. we have Atlas Games for that reason. Um, I mean, nowadays kids just say random nonsense. Like, <laughs> what, what what are the kids say nowadays? Don't the, worry the, about the, it. The Don't worry about okay. it. Anyway, back to <laughs> Atlas Games. <laughs> But yeah, that just that just unlocked the memory because I ended up saying the word mating, thinking it was like a whole bunch of like things. And I'm like, nope, I messed up. I should have not said that when I was a kid. And then it just hit me like a bag of bricks. Just nope, I should have never said that. <laughs> All right, guys. Are you ready for the tier list? OK. Oh, boy. All right. Um, if if we're gonna do this, I probably should get ready. Um, we have some more water. Is that okay, Hito? Sure. Sure. All right. So now that so now that Mecha Dragons with Thanos off of the stream, did not hear it. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. We love that. Um, let's show off the list, which I put in the wrong screen because I tend to forget things. All right. Let's. Let's show off the list. Bye. -bye. So this is our list of Atlas games. And okay. y'all know the rules. You guys get to pick one S to automatically go into the S games. Okay. And I already know Matt's right off the bat. If it's here. Okay, it's here. It's actually, it, it's here. Royal or regular? Do they not have strikers there? They have strikers. Oh, uh, no, put strikers there. Oh, I'm surprised. Yeah. No, that, uh, there's a reason. Okay, no problem. <laughs> since, since I was a little gone, I'll go, I'll go a little into it. I'm not going to go super into it. So, st I wanted to actually give a little uh, uh, testimonial towards strikers. I really like it. I really, really, really like it as a game. I fell in love with it when I first played it back uh, a couple years ago. Um... Uh, so I mentioned this on Shellshock's podcast regarding JRPGs. As a huge JRPG lover, I know you're no slouch yourself, you know. Yep. As a huge, and Elvis isn't either. As a huge JRPG lover, I love the fact that it's a direct sequel to a previous JRPG that that doesn't have a lot of the pitfalls that a few other direct sequels have. Now, when I say direct sequel, I mean starring the same cast of characters on another adventure. Like, Xenoblade 2 doesn't count. That's Rex and, like, other mythos and, like, some other stuff. Like, I said this on Shell's JRPG podcast. It's re... You know, okay, this is a joke I came up with. So, you know how Sonic's always had a rough transition to 3D? You know, haha, funny YouTuber line? On, to, on God, though, as a JRPG aficionado, JRPGs have always had a rough transition to making sequels for themselves because it makes sense how do you take the same group of characters who you spent 40 50 60 in persona 5's case like over 100 how do you take those characters who went to she spent all those hours with they went through rising character growth rising action climax falling action this and that and 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 at the end of the game they defeat a god or some being of similar caliber how do you do that all over again and start the same exact characters not many not many direct jrpg sequels get that right 
Uh, my favorite JRPG series, the Tales series, fumbles a little. Tales of Vonia 2 and Tales of Exilia 2 have some unfortunate uh, negative criticism against them. They're not they're not awful games by any means. They're still definitely playable, and I, and I like them. But boy, howdy, do they do they have some missteps in their direct sequel approach? And Persona 5 Strikers didn't have the same missteps that those two games did. So I got to give a lot of accolades to Persona 5 Strikers. Now, does Persona 5 Strikers have a few negative points to it, or, or low criticism? Yeah, the story plays a little too safe at some points is one of my top criticisms. But I digress. But even then, I just thought as part of a as part of one of JRPG that's a direct sequel of all time, I think it's one of the best. That's why it deserves the S. Persona 5, sure. Yeah, people will talk about Persona 5 from years to come. But I want to say you should not sleep on its sequel. I had a phenom as a JRPG aficionado, I had a phenomenal time with it. Okay. So there we Wonder go. You are so sesame playing it because oh hi oh, everyone. There. Yo, hello, um, welcome back. I know how to say hi. Uh, Hopefully that wasn't so overblown. Yet. Oh no, that was perfect. I, I loved it. Um, so Elvis, we're doing the uh, you were doing the tier list maker. So this is the plan. You get to pick an S game that automatically goes to S. No questions asked. It's your S. It's your S. Really? It's your S. So pick a game. Okay, Persona 5, the the rhythm game there. Oh, okay. You do know he wants, he wants he wants dancing in the starlight. I guess. Okay, I, just, I don't know. That's an S game. I just want to be silly. Just pick the fun dancing. Game. Oh no! I just want Sorry. to make it clear. We still have Royal and Persona Five here in the list as well. Uh, uh. But you can pick can I, anything do I, else. Do I need to use it now or can I save it? No, you have to use it now. Use it now because we're about to go others. through the other games. I see. Okay. Then in that case. Persona 5 is it has to be an S tier game because that game is so much fun. I just don't know. Royal or vanilla. Royal or vanilla. Royal, yeah. I mean, I guess this is worse, the better version of vanilla to get the royal version. Okay. Because, uh, because, like, like I, the reason why we've always been talking about the whole podcast is because, like, it's super addicting. Like, honestly, t to be fair, Persona 5 kind of helped me out because I think I was unemployed at the time when I was playing that game. That's the only reason why I was able to beat it. Cause I had nothing else better to do, and it kind of it was a fun time. I was my friend lent it to me, and well, the vanilla one, but so five boy five the same thing. And I was playing it; it was a good time. I I got very into the game. There were nights where I was just playing that game nonstop, and I could go on about it, about the fun times I had that game. It's pretty long. I'll admit that it's uh. One of the longest games I ever played is basically like 100 hours and it kind of drags here and there, but no, um, don't let the time limit, don't, don't let the time limit scare you, because some people are kind of like comfortable with like, oh my god, I only have like 10 days to beat this one this one chapter is like no they give you ample time you're fine i, I see the similar thing about people who are scared of majora's mask don't let the time limit scare you just a just a little slightly off topic and... but yeah but uh no i I, Persona 5 is definitely one of my favorite um, RPGs, and I could play it again. I, well, I actually kind of wanted to play it again, but, but then the Royal come out, but <laughs> I digress. Um, I will beat it one day. I have to be Strikers for you. Right. Uh, so then we get the bay of that's an S tier game. Yep. So, Hito, if you don't mind me just interjecting real quick, remind me, you give us a free S because I forget, do we have to collectively come up where a game belongs, or do you like get the final say? No, which is fine. We, I'm collective, just we collectively oh. uh, do the thing. So, yeah, this is okay. So, I have a rule here for tier list now because I came up okay. with it last week. Um, okay, if okay. we've never played the game, we just say what that. Okay, fair enough. So it will go into the never played slash never beaten, not beaten. That's very fair, yes. Um, but let's go into my S. I'm choosing Catherine. Okay. So fair. I chose Catherine. They're full body. Well, they don't have full body here. If they did, I would have chose full body right off the bat. But Catherine has an essence as a whole. Yep. But Cath Catherine's my S. Too. So Catherine is oh, my S because uh, I enjoyed the puzzle aspect of the game. I rarely get a chance to enjoy puzzle games nowadays because... Everything has to either have like an intense story or battle system or something like that. And I don't really get a chance to enjoy puzzle games. This one, although very sleazy and sometimes can be very misogynistic and I want to slap some of the characters half the time, I enjoy the gameplay very much overall. And the arcing morality and dilemma of the game when it comes down to it. Um, overall, Vincent is a character that's basically a sheep, which, <laughs> pun intended, but... Yes, a sheep nonetheless on whether he should let 
himself get loose with another girl or his, should he like an abandoned responsibility or stay with the girl he's loved forever and actually still go through and start learning responsibility and honestly i played this game during my teens which was my 18s to like my 20s ish so I think it's a good idea to say that this was the perfect time for me to play this game, especially uh, considering yes. I was Hormones. going through that whole morality as well. So I kind of could put myself in that same picture. Um, although I did end up dumping the girl I was dating at the time because she was very sadistic and crazy and I did not want to go with that. Um, <clears throat> try to force a baby. <clears throat> anyway. Huh? Catherine definitely taught me the morality scale a lot more better than anything. And... Even so, with that, the puzzle game is phenomenal, and I honestly tried beating records in Catherine. I get very close with Catherine, but if I could do GDQ, if I could do one game in GDQ aside from Ape Escape or Jumping Flash, uh, Catherine will be my go-to on that one, because I would love to go on GDQ one day and play Catherine and beat it as quickly as possible. Um, that's a goal. All in all together, uh, Catherine itself is you could challenge yourself, you can enjoy the moral dilemma of the game, you can enjoy the puzzles, and even more so that I'm happy they added its own game within a game, which was the Rapunzel game, which does the same concept of the game you are playing currently. It's a fun hmm. game overall, and honestly, I would hype if you don't mind a little lewd and maturity going into the game, uh Oh good heavens. You definitely oh, would enjoy server. Catherine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And you two are 18 plus, so I don't want to hear shit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a kid of 12. My uh, eyes. <laughs> Bull. Think of the children. Think of the children, my ass. All right. <laughs> Let's start with the first game now that we're going to be grading, All which right. is 13 Sentinels. I just. That's recent. I just aim. Isn't it? Yeah, I think it that's recent. recent. So, what that. Yeah, it's what that for me. I haven't played it yet. It's on my, it's on my eventual to do list. It's on my wish list on Steam. It's, a, it's just a what that. Mecca? Uh, yeah, I think it's a what, a what that you said? Yeah, what that it, it means you said. never played the game before. Yeah. If all three of no. us haven't played the game before, we just won't rate it. But yep. we're obviously like, but that's the kind of just see for the trailers and whatnot. So. No, 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 I mean, no. We can make some comments on the game. <laughs> yeah, it sort of does, but yeah. But yeah, we're not going to rate it, obviously. We yeah, can't rate it because that. at the end of the day, it's like we never played it, so it wouldn't be a but fair. I think we're allowed to just say like comments on our outside perspective yep. on it just for, just for like a little bit. Go but, for yeah. it. But no, no, that's it. Yeah, yeah it looks interesting. It's on my to do list eventually. The end. I can't read Japanese, so what that? Yeah, I don't even know what that game is. Uh, can you zoom in? I'm already zoomed in. He's already zoomed in. I can zoom in more, but look at how it looks now. We're gonna discover the mystery Game Boy Color game by Alice. But yeah, uh, anyway, that's the best I could do. Um, next up is Shin Megami Tensei Digital Devil Saga, and they also have a sequel. Oh, unfortunately, I have to take a back seat here. That's a what that for me. That's a what that for me. Okay, so I found the game. It's Shin Megami Tensei Devil's Children. Devil Saga. Look it up on Google. No, the, 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 the series. One. Yeah, oh, that game. Devil Children. Pfft. It's a child friendly version of Shin Megami Tensei. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, it basically looks like say. Pokemon for like Shimigami Tensei. Which is like, isn't that what Person well, is not really children? All right, but... so again, <laughs> Digital Devil Saga. It's a degree. What, what that? That was the there. That was a that's a spinoff of Swimming My Tensei, right? Yes. Because it's not a number. It's not a number series, right? Well, technically, it has its own series because there's a part two down there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Again, is that a what that? that? Sorry. Yeah, it's about that. Sorry, guys. Okay. That's okay. And I'm I apologize. A, I'm assuming two is the same thing as well. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be what dad for a little bit. <laughs> also, Demi Kids, which is a, so guys. Uh, I actually played the Demi Kids series. This is Shin Megami Tensei, the child version again, and they were oh, trying okay. to do Pokemon. Essentially, they had the light version and the dark version, and again, it, it, it's it's fine, but it wasn't the best. I had the dark version though. Oh, okay. I, I would I've give seen... it. I would give it a solid okay. B. Okay, that's fair. I'll take your word for it. Uh, I, 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 have no, I have no influence. Mecca. Apparently, they had an anime too. Have I'm you played? Saying. Have you played Demi Kids? I haven't. So what um, that? But it looks yeah. Right. Oh, uh, if you yeah, put that for me too. I'm gonna be put. I'm gonna be putting these the same on B because of the fact that they're the same game, just different yeah, so versions. Pokemon, yeah. Yeah. 
I got you. It does look kind of interesting, though. I'm, I'm looking it up right now on Google. Um, next up is Devil Survivor Overclocked. I'll have to take another green. That's another green for me, too. I don't like the... De- I, I kind of don't touch the Devil Survivor series anymore, especially after I was disappointed by Soul Hacker. Are they, mm. dif- are they like a different gameplay style or something? I was not a, fr- I was not a fan of it. But yeah. Also, Mecha, what that? Yeah, what that for me, too. So I'm assuming Sorry. Devil Survivor 2 will also be on that list. Uh, Devil Summoner, Shin Megami Tensei's Devil Summoner. Another green for me. At least Everybody now we're gonna get we're gonna get Matt to play some Atlas games. <laughs> maybe we gave him enough booty bucks, maybe. I already have enough booty bucks. bucks to get him on the first one, on the first one I have an idea with. <laughs> but um, next up is Dragon's Crown, Dragon Crown. Uh, okay, so I know I said this is in my backlog, but I did I did play a little with a friend in college. Uh, so I, I technically have extremely minor experience with this game. Does that count? Yes. Okay. Uh, from what I remembered, it it is a, I was enjoying my time with it. It's a nice it's a nice side uh, side scroller like uh, adventure beat 'em up. It's all it's almost like the old dra- uh, Dungeon Dragons side scrolling games. There's RPG elements. There's stuff you can cast and do. I'd give it. I'd actually give it a solid. Uh, I'd give it a, I'd give it a solid A. I'd give it a solid A. It'll probably be on the, well, I know we don't really rank into individuals in the actual tier itself, but I'd give it a solid A. Yep. Oh, no. I, I do remember enjoying my time with it. Oh, no, it's a what dat for me, and it's a what dat for Mecca, so you got the solo grade on the A. No, I'm just yeah, saying, I we, we, it, I, I, in my opinion, it would probably end up on the lower a, a spectrum of A, but we don't rank yeah. individuals in the in the tier itself. You just yeah, leave but it, is it like, just it's fine. a... What is that like a, a beat up a brawler? A, yeah, no, it's a side scrolling brawler beat 'em up with JRPG with well with RPG elements. It's like the old uh, Dungeon and Dragon side scrolling games if you remember those that were all like on a video game system. All right, the arcade game. I'm sorry, I'm trying to say arcade game. I can't. D two. Shin Megami Tensei Liberation. A, I've played this one. That's a green for me. So teach me, Nito. Yes. So Shin Megami T- um, Tensei D two. This was actually a very good game. A while back, so hold on a sec before I even continue this. I've seen the cover, I've played it before. I'm just trying to like remember as well. It was forgettable for me. That's the problem. It was kind of forgettable for me. And that might be in C for cock tier. For co- <laughs> hold on, uh, I'm just trying to remind myself of it because I did play it. The, the cover is very familiar. The art of Dragon's Crown is really good. Again, like I said, I bought the art book at Long Island Retro last year. I, will, I, I see you, Dragon's Crown, over there on my PS4 shelf. Don't worry, I will play you. Fun fact, Dragon's Crown is not still on PC. You have to get the PS4 version. Or PS3, but you know what I mean. All oh, right. I, I, it's not super expensive. You can get a copy de- decently priced. This is when they were using phone apps, and this is when the, devil, the, the devils, the demons, were phone <laughs> apps. Uh, uh, I remember now. This is a C for me. Uh, me. I, I was not that interested in the whole concept of these are phone apps. Yeah, and I'm like, no, no. This became this, this like became Cyber game. Story. This game Cyber Sleuth so quickly. Stop it. This became Apple Monsters. Stop it. <laughs> um, Persona Two: Eternal Punishment. I have not played. That's a green for me. I, have, I hear a lot of things about this game. Apparently, you can fight Hitler in this game or something. Yes, and. I'd give it a C as well. Like I said, the older Persona games were not that great. I'm not gonna. No, 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 I'm just that waiting a remake I'm wait, three. I'm waiting, I'm waiting until we get to a number ahead of that one. Oh yeah. Next up is Persona remake three. We might as well just remake one and two. Next because... up is Shin Megami Tensei Persona Two: Innocent Sin. This one was a little bit better. What exactly is the difference? Oh, you said Shin. Wait, oh, Shin Megami Tensei, and that's actual Persona. Persona okay. Two, uh, Insa- and, and Innocent Shin Sin. Megami Tensei. Oh, yep. Okay, okay, okay. But they, this one's kind of colliding both Persona and Shin Megami Tensei together. They're basically the same thing with the creatures that they collect. However, this one goes a little bit more uh, towards the dark side. Do oh, the dark side. Edgy, emo, me, and I edgy. Oh, sure. Darker son. Okay. Sure. That's the wrong way. To do it. Uh, last, last Bible. Bible. Was that a Bible game? Sure. I have no idea what that is, to be honest. I'm... I believe this came out for the Sega Genesis or the Dreamcast. I might be bugging. But I've never played it, so what that for me? Uh, Machin X. 
This that sounds familiar, but I I haven't played it. What that? Was that also an anime? Or am I going crazy? Maybe. But anyway, green for me. All right. Yeah, that's great. Persona Q2, new Cinema right, Labyrinth. Now we, go. Now we now can talk. I played this. You know, this is interesting because I think that game was on sale for like ten bucks, and of course I forgot to buy it because um, yeah, you know, it's hard to get stuff. this game now. Yeah. I have my copies. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, well, yes, I'm, I'm good too. No, uh, I haven't played game, it, but it looks kind of cute because it's basically yeah, kind of like um, it's it's the Colette Persona games. Tail the Tail series I mentioned earlier, which I'm a fan of, does something similar too. They have the Tales of the World game where all the characters come together and work together. Uh, my brief opinion on this game: it's pretty cool. I wish it was dubbed though. I know the one before this one was dubbed, and this one's not. And as a dub lover, I it, it strikes against me. I would personally put this in B, and it's not just because of the dub; it's because of a few other things. Uh, it's limited animation, and, and what they tried to copy Persona 5 style as best they could, but limited animation on the 3DS. I don't like, I'm not a huge fan of JRPGs where you're just the health bar, or you're just your health bar on the screen and you launch attacks at the enemy staring at you. I kind of wish I can see the characters doing something. What do you there's, mean uh, there's a few other. you so say. It's like. It's like, you know, Earthbound is an example of this. You know Earthbound, you just, you're just you just a bar on the screen, like a health, like yeah. a block, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you just launch attacks that do like a little splat. Etron Odyssey does the same thing, and there's also that random Wizard of Oz JRPG, but I'll, that, that's another story for another time. But anyway, I'm just saying, I like it when, it, when the game, show, even in turn base, shows the character having animation launching attack. Now, Golden Sun does that really well in Game Boy Advance, so there's kind of no excuse. But, the, 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 but so, yeah. Yeah, the, the game store coming out a little animation and not being dubbed. I put it B. Sorry for the long. I think it's, uh, I think it's a common thing now. There's a fortune. There. A lot of people don't want to dub it either because they don't have the rights or they don't want to pay the money for it. Well, main Persona line games will definitely be dubbed. Uh, they probably just wanted to scoot this one off because it was a 3DS entry mm -hmm. way late in its life. So this is the last like AAA 3DS game release or maybe Bowser's Inside Story release after this, but yeah. I digress. So I'm going to go into this. I would put this at an A. Only reason okay. why is because it's not the stereotypical RPG where it's just fighting monsters and doing the whole thing. It's also dungeon trailing and making sure that you avoid enemies as well. This goes kind right. of into the trying to be stealthy and, and trying to avoid certain enemies or going for enemies that would actually benefit you at the most. This one's not really based on more of the level, which a higher level, of course, means great abilities all at all together. However, just because... You have a high level does not guarantee sometimes that you'll get out of a situation with no problem and that's where this game kicks in because i've played both q and q2 and i can say for a fact that i have was severely under level for both games and i still managed to beat the final boss because there are ways to actually work around and this game actually makes you have to go into rpg strategy exactly so if you're able to gimmick around and also find the certain dungeons everywhere it kind of goes into play so i would put this in an A tier, because this one did it a lot better than Q. Okay, you, you can do that, Hito. It's, it's just my bias for not having dub that puts it down to B tier. <laughs> if it was dubbed, I would probably I would definitely 100% agree with you on A. So you can just put on A, it's just my bias. Which we could also put Q in A then, if that's the case, because this one is dubbed. It, this one is dubbed, I know. But you just said you think, I'm just I'm just saying, you just said you thought Q, Q2 was the better game overall? Yeah, it definitely was. No however, however I, yeah. I'm going to be honest, I didn't play Q1, I only played Q2 because Joker's in it and I'm a yeah. simp. But Q1 <laughs> was definitely great as well it was also an a tier as well um the story wrapped up really well and i got to play as persona 3 characters which honestly here's the thing as much as i like 5 and 4 i really relate to the persona 3 protagonist the most okay fair enough. um that's kind of my whole thing uh little bias on that but yeah i actually ended up choosing the persona 3 staff before the four four ones when you get to choose which game you want to like Use it, and the thing you is, route yourself towards. I know that's a thing. The soundtrack for Q2, I mean Q2 and Q1 are great because they mix smash essentially each individual style each game has to go for. For example, in Q1 they mixed up the rock, and they mixed up the um, trumpeting and orchestral soundtrack that is four and then the rock soundtrack for three and they somehow made a masterpiece from that and then in Q2 they mix up the jazz remixes with the rocks with the rock remixes and the orchestral remixes and it really 
does a solid way of mixing these games. It's like a great crossover amongst different sequels of a game. And they did it right. They did right by it. I, I can't, you know, I can't say that they didn't do anything weird about it. It was really good. Okay. And now, Odin Spear. Again, now this one I actually haven't played or anything. No, th this one's fully on my backlog. That's it's a great Miller, thing. Odin Spear. Miller, yeah. Uh, oh, it's original came out in 2007 on PS2, but not in America, I believe. Not in America. Or, and then, and then eventually a PS4 rematch that came out for everything. And dub too. Yeah. I have not played it, so I'm green, but it's in my backlog. All right. Uh, I would give this one a C. Okay, fair enough. Original Odin Spear was a little shaky. I did enjoy the game. It didn't suck. It's just the C, it, it was kind of like, meh. It doesn't suck, but it's meh. One of, one of the style of games that, well, actually, no. It, one, I think one of the style of games like that I did play was a Muramas of the Demon Blade on, on, on Wii. Yeah. But I, that's, I don't think that's Atlas. That's just the same, like, secondary studio that they that like making 2D games like that, yeah. if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Next up is Persona right, 3 Dancing <laughs> <laughs> Dancing Mona in the Star. I mean, which yeah. one? Those are technically two different games. This is yeah, two know. different games, but all in all it's together, um, it's it is one game. So I love that game. Can we just put both of these where they belong? Where A? I, I would say B. It's a spinoff, but it's really it's a really good spinoff, actually. So I actually bought this game I'm between B and A. Uh... I mean, I would agree with you. My my number one opinion on this game is that yeah, I enjoyed my time with it, but ultimately, if I were to spend my time with more rhythm games, I would just go with Hatsune Miku. Hatsune Miku clears this game. As much as I like, the, obviously, as well as much as I like Persona Five Cast and all that, and Three is no slouch itself. Don't get me wrong. The game but is a. As much as, I, as much as as much as I like Persona music in general, I this game was fun to play, but I'll ultimately indulge all my time with Hatsune Miku. So like. I think I tried a game on the PS4. It was a little difficult because I think you could tell it was basically made for the Vita because yeah, it, yeah, it was. yeah, you can tell commands are kind of hard to see in the computer. Right. Either that yeah, or just lied. Yeah. Now I think they had to circle out, and I'm like, what? I even see that now I know how quickly you're gonna go after this, but I'm gonna 100% tell you this: this is the portable version, not the original. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm green for that one. I did not play that. I've played the portable I know, version. I know the difference is you can be a girl in this one. The scenes are more condensed because PSP uh, uh, power, but I... I this is the know. version they, they, they based the uh, re-release on for the Switch. That is and, true. Right? Yeah, that is true because Which, it, has, it has technically more content, but not at the same time. And you it has a little it. bit of a better battle system, but not the same, but I would put it in B. Because a lot of people complain that they should have gone with like the FE. Now for the original yeah, Persona that have... Three, that could go in. C that could go in D. Yeah, that can go in. Oh, like B, good D for Dick. Is absolutely. it that big of an of an improvement compared to the original? Yes, the, because the yes, yes. Mecha I Dragon. Did you play 3. Persona Three and Persona Portable? Persona Three Portable. I mean, I see videos of. Oh, Vid no, he's defending. He's defending games he hasn't played, like usual. Don't defend the game that you haven't played. Did you actually play the games and see the difference? I, not yet. So okay. that's the issue with the situation because I've played both the original Persona Three, and it frustrates the hell out of me. As much as I love yep. the freaking story, as much as I love the freaking story, it cannot defend how unplayable the battle system mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. The only way you can get away with half the bullshit in the game is if you over level. And trust me, when the game just becomes grind, 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 it is not fun. So when yeah, this came terrible. out, when Portable came out, I was like, okay, cool. But guess what Portable's based off of? FES. Yeah, yeah, yeah. FES is the more updated version of this game. So that was the one that got me into the Persona 3 series because I played FES first. Then I played Portable, which was even better. But I originally played the original P3 first, and that was where I was kind of disgusted. I could not get into it after a while. Mafia has something that Portable doesn't have, right? Or they the Yeah, well, game. well, well, no, well, yes. More presentation, the cutscenes, because you're comparing a PS2 game to a PSP1 game. So, like, yeah. Well, 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 well. P3 Portable makes up a whole bunch of uh, monetary improvements. You, lo you lose out on cutscene presentation because they use a lot of still images because PSP power. Hence, FPS came out and fixed most of that issue. That's why Persona 3 is so weird. The best mechanical version is the Portable 
playable version, but the best presentation version is the old PS2 version. That's probably why they're rumor remaking it. Yep. Now we have Persona 4 Dancing All Night. I played this game. Uh, I didn't play that one, to be, uh, to be honest. <laughs> I only played the 3 slash 5 one. They did a really good job on this. I would give this over the Persona 5 and Persona 4, um, 3 mixture. This was the original, and they did a very good job to predecess it to Persona 5 and Persona 3. Um, okay. Definitely enjoyed it, and can't stand freaking. Uh, you know what? We'll go. I'll go into spoilers later because I actually want you to play Persona Four, Matt, at okay. least because this one at least did a better job. Uh, okay. Persona Four U Arena Ultimax. I played this one. Oh, I uh, uh, mainly have not. I, I know I played one of the arena games. I think it was the one based on Persona Four. This is the yeah, one on Persona right Four. This one. This, this is right now. We're looking at. And I actually, I actually played this in a tournament. I was a, oh, cool. I was a Yu Narukami slash Akihiko fan, and I enjoyed it. Um, but then I also learned how to pick up Teddy, and Teddy was a dick, and I loved it. Um, this is a really good game. It also introduces Persona Three characters as well, so you can play as Akihiko, you can play as Yukari, you can play basically a majority of the Keijo, Keijos in there too. Um, they put in a lot of characters, and also they finally got Risei to fight, which she's usually the support, but they actually have her fighting because, unlike Fuka, where she was able to, you know, not really be able to fight as much, she's still kind of stuck to support. Risei actually gets an evolution that actually allows her to fight and analyze at the same time. So, I, I have to give Ultimax where it was. It was an A. It was an improvement from the original Persona 4 Arena, and I have to say it was really one of the best, but what... Really, the better one. I'm happy they put the better one here. All right. The next one is Persona 4. Arena, Persona, isn't it? Perso no, no, just that Persona was 4. Persona 4 region. Oh, this is yeah. Golden. No, this is regular. I go. You switch them around yeah. first, but yes. So regular Persona 4, I give a B. Uh, I'm I'm green. I haven't played. I I mean, I went from three to five. I haven't played Persona 4 at all. I've seen it in action, but haven't played. So I'm green. Mecca. I played the. The new one on Steam, so I'm not this one. So Persona 4 the original is great and all, but it does still have some of those bugs from Persona 3 when it comes to the battle system. However, um, I will say this: at least you can control a majority of the. At least you can control a lot more of what you could do than you did in three. Not in the beginning as much, but that's an issue right there because if you do that in the beginning, the first impression is I can't control my other characters. This sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. So that's the problem. Golden gets an S from Golden. me because oh my god, it improved so much of Persona Four. S. Huh? No, no, no. Well, well, uh, we haven't played Golden, so we we have no choice but to. Just I play that. like a quarter of Golden now. Okay, lot. well, what's your opinion? On Steam. I mean, it's I'm great. I like it. I believe him. I'm I mean, Yeah, he I was can't. great. Okay. Uh, nah, he doesn't know he's talking about kidding. No, um, I mean, honestly, I haven't played too much of Golden. I think I played like an hour of it, but. Um, from what I see online, it looks beautiful. The music is good, and I, think, I mean, your word is more important than me because I only played like an hour of it. You probably made the whole. I beat this thing, game for thing, the right? PlayStation Vita. I had, I had it. My friend stole it, and he still has it to this day. And well, actually, correction, yeah. not my friend anymore, but still, still has my copy. Um, but I have the Steam version, so I get to play it again any which way. But mm -hmm. game is good. It added so much content, and it actually fixed a lot of the story bugs that the first one did. Not only did it fix the story, but it also fixed the gameplay and the battle and the battle mode. Like I said, Persona 4 was still a little sloppy in its original version, but Golden fixed a majority of that. Like I'm, I'm so not going I'm not going through grind 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 as a whole entire thing. This is a really good game. I will give it an S. I'm so happy they poured this on the system cuz I, I I really want to play 4 after I, I finished 5. I'm like, where the hell am I going to find a Vita? I was actually so tempted to find a Vita and get the TV, but then the TV is super expensive. But then when I heard they're pointing this is to Steam and now other consoles, I was like, oh, thank God. I can just mm. play it on Steam. No. So, it's funny because <laughs> uh, when, when Alice did that, they were so shocked about the sales. They're like, oh, we, you guys actually want to play our games? Did you hear that? Next up is Persona 5. Uh, I'm going to give it an, I'm going to give it an S. It, it, it still deserves a test. Yep, it definitely even, does deserve even, a test. Even if there's an arguable better version with Royal. I'm going to be honest, Persona 5 
I, I'm going to go on an interesting sort of uh, opinion here. Persona 5, yeah, Royal's technically the more beefier, better version, but the, the original still does things actually better than I like than Royal. One, I don't have to listen to TakeOver back and forth for 120 hours. <laughs> listen, TakeOver's a good song, but Last Surprise is undeniably better. And they switched it around, so when you ambush an enemy, you get TakeOver, and when you don't, you get Last Surprise. So it almost like Pavlov's dogs you to think that Last Surprise is negative, because if you don't ambush an enemy, you're in a worst state already in a battle so that's that was kind of mean towards last surprise you didn't have to throw that <laughs> shade that. but it well anyway i digress anyway yeah anyway takeover's not as good as a song as last surprise but it's still persona 5 royal and still no more meteor content i like takeover it's a really good song it just it's oh, not, no, I, I'm not I, don't, yeah. I don't hate on it but it doesn't hold a candle to last surprise hey, oh, interesting yeah <laughs> that's what happens when you actually play games elvis uh mecca are you also <laughs> sticky with persona 5 being an s as well I mean, yeah, um, that's was this is the one I actually played, like I said, for Harley. Uh, I feel, okay, I feel bad for giving my S to Royal, but I'm assuming Royal is the same um, thing. You know, you're allowed to give pretty, pretty much. So yeah. you're allowed, you're allowed to technically give another S, especially if it's in a consensus with the, us. The previous S's were just unargumented S's. Like, yes, you, for, no one else can clear you from that. Yep. Not even, not even uh, Manito. I don't have. Uh, no, okay, I'll keep it an S because I guess that game is. Yeah, actually, can I take, can I take a quick tangent if you don't mind? Go ahead. Uh, really quickly, if I didn't give the unargumented S to Strikers, what's your opinion on Strikers? I would give it an A or an S. I would still be between that as well because the okay. game is really good. It's a different battle style, but overall, there was just this one moment of like feeling it got a little grindy. Okay, fair enough. That's the only reason why I slightly dip from an S to an A, but other than that, I was still able to pull off all the tricky stuff, and you do have control of the battle, so even if you are somewhat underleveled, you could still pull a win off, and that's why I still give it an S. Yeah. It, it's still, it, despite changing the battle system to even a real time, it's still a JRPG system that rewards JRP strategy. That that always gets an A in my book. Yeah. Oh, the way you the map, you apparently fight Alexa in this game or something. Yeah, well, that's yes, basically. yes, you do. Yes, you do actually. All right. <laughs> All right. Next up is Shimagami <laughs> Tensei Persona, the original yes. first Persona. Oh, that's a green for me. Haven't played. So like I said, I played a little bit of this on my PlayStation Classic. If remember that fiasco and that counts so what's your opinion it's like i said earlier in the show it's it's not the same it's not the same as previous persona games because i think you have to like the, the the combat looks kind of ugly it's kind of difficult so i guess i'll give it a c or a d i i don't, I, I don't think i can rate it because i haven't beat it yet i'd give it a b and with your d it might be it'll be in c okay Fair so, you know, you, 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 this Persona 1 game actually aged apparently decently well for you. It did okay. Um, mind you, it's not as easy as the other Persona games now. Like, Persona 5 is definitely a lot easier than Persona. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, of course. Persona 4 Golden is definitely a lot easier than this Persona. Even Persona 3 is a little bit easier. And I'm not talking about the original, I'm talking about FES. Um, is a little bit more easier than this. Um, I'm a little pissed off that Persona 3 took the route to have your partners not be yeah, able to do things, which was yeah, stupid, yeah. but they also did take it from 2 a little bit as well, which I was disappointed, but Persona 1 is a little bit more tricky. It's a lot more grittier and dark, too. So if yeah. you are not prepared for this story, um, don't play the game, because <laughs> I will say this very carefully, the story is not for the faint of heart. There is, is dark. A, do you mean like it deals with like sensitive topics? Yes, or, very yeah. sensitive topics. Yes. Like, I'm Persona, sure that's what he means. like exactly. Persona Five had some sensitive topics, but this one goes a little bit over the deep edge. Mm. Over I the deep end. Interested in this now. The only problem is it's, it's kind of difficult to play Persona One because no one's gonna buy a PlayStation Classic now or Radiant Historia. Or, I've heard of that one. I have not played it though. I have not played I it either. I a friend who did, but I have not played it, so I'm green. Elvis. No, if not. Okay. I'm sorry. Now, don't right. apologize. It's fine. Devil Summoner, Rido, Kunaiza, and the Soulless Army. Not played Ooh, it. Ooh, uh, uh, Vespi played that one, but I have not, so that's a green for me. Want to call Vespi in our hotline? Like, which one's even <laughs> no. here? No, we're not, not going to Re jump into server. Persona Revelations. This one I've played. I have not, so I'll just listen to your words. Isn't that the first Persona, or is it different games? It's another different game. <laughs> it's revelations this is the one and by the way you didn't play the original persona in your playstation classic 
um, Mecca. It was this one, Revelations. Oh, that's the plot ah. twist. I had no idea. Cool. I feel like an idiot now. Cool. Uh, this one also goes in the sea as well. This one's a little bit more friendlier to you. It's not as dark as the other one, but definitely will catch you by surprise. I did so so this is this is really interesting towards me from my perspective these older persona games are aging better than og p3 that just shows how fucked up old pg you are so was. mean to p3 i mean apparently i love p3 i love p3 fes <laughs> yeah. um next up shin megami tensei 4 apocalypse this was for the 3ds yeah, I, oh, I, I've yeah, seen the memes of the it. big chin guy, and they always wear, they wear the blue trench coat with the white like underneath it. I, I've seen the characters from this game, I have not played. This it was like Super Papa already came out, right? Hello, so Marcus I am agreed. Did like, you did Nintendo? you play it? Uh, no, but I saw the marketing for it, and I didn't play it either. So we'll go to never be in, not be in. Never Shout played out to the big chin meme guy. <laughs> Shout out to the big chin. <laughs> Next Jameson. up is. Sh Next game is Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. All right, so I just a quick question. So I have played this. I played both versions. Can I can I use the remaster as like counting towards this because they don't have separate like game entities on here? That's fine. Is it all congealed into one. That's fine. All right. So yes, I, I have played SMT three. So is Vespi again. Funnily enough, my good old buddy. So yeah, SMT three. Uh, it's my favorite SMT game because I uh, spoiler alert, I have played a little of five, but I digress. It's my favorite SMT game. I actually really like it. Again, we were talking about Demi Fiend earlier. He's swag as fuck. He's my favorite SMT protagonist by far i love him to death i love his slidey punchy so yeah this as a game it's definitely different than persona you don't really well you talk to people in the world but it is a demified world it's a demonified world you don't you don't live a japanese schoolboy life you live in a hellscape like sort of reality demon life in did i don't know how to really describe but the is there a high school in this demon life true enough, true enough. <laughs> but is there <laughs> a high like, school <laughs> but is there high school <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, any, but anyway, uh, so yeah, it has the SMT <laughs> moniker, so it gets more grindy than your average Persona game. It gets it gets hell in a handbasket with its encounter rate. It does use, well, the old version uses like uh, random encounters, like just from the map. I think the remaster, if I remember correctly, has the monsters on there, I believe. So yeah, or you can turn them off or the remaster allows you to turn off encounters. I forget exactly which version. I'm sort of blanking because I played the remaster version two years ago. But anyway, uh, it's my favorite SMT game. I give it a solid day. I, I really like it. I love the music, the main battle theme, the down, 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 down. It's fucking great. I love it. Uh, right. So yeah, overall, I give this uh, game a solid A. It, it's tougher to get into than your average Persona game, but I enjoyed my time with it. Also, oh, Dante's in it. It features Dante <laughs> from Devil May Cry, dude. That's where the meme originally. Oh, came from. oh yeah. Forgot. Yeah, that's where the meme came from, dude. Yeah. Featured Dante of the Devil May Cry series. Yeah, there we go. All right, y'all ready for this? Now I'm not gonna get an A for for creating a meme. <laughs> so wait, Hito, did you play it or? or oh no, it's a one that for me. I didn't get a chance to play Nocturne. Oh, okay, fair enough. Okay, so it was okay, cool, yeah. That it's fine in A. Trust me on that one. Uh next up is Strange Journey Redux Shin Megami Tensei. Oh, I've heard of that one too. Have not played. I'm a greeno. Played it. I'm a greeno. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, my, oh, okay. I was gonna say Monster Elvis. Chop chop. Pay attention. Alright, this is another Shin Megami Tensei game. I don't know which one. What is uh, uh Red Box Golden Light? Yep. It doesn't uh, even say the console. What, do we know what console it is? No. I want to say it's like uh, Super NES maybe, but I don't think they originated back on Super NES. Probably they, not. they did. They Super did. Nintendo there are Super oh, there are Nintendo. Right there. there are Nintendo ones. I'm I'm getting SNES vibes from it, but I'm just taking a random gut feeling guess. Anyway, I think it's obviously green for all of us. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. What, oh wait, this is another one. This is definitely another one for the. Oh, uh, this yep. is this is dark box. See, it's it's the dual version. You get golden red box and dark green box. <laughs> yeah, right. Happy box and sad. <laughs> okay, box. we have if. I think there's one on Switch Online, right? I'm not. Oh wait, you mean if or the depressed green box? No, that no. If if if, if. the one that he's not in. I'm not sure to be honest, but again, this is also green for me. Yep. This is yeah, this is a me. sign that we have to play more Shin Megami Tensei. True enough, but they're always so. But they're all of them are pretty much JRPG. So there's only I'm all, I'm only there's only so much time in my life. Well, where I'm am I gonna get my wife? Is Shin Megami Tensei the more serious version of? Oh, it's the more Persona. serious. Yep. You can play as a sliding dude in black shorts, punching people with tattoos. Let's Shin Megami Tensei, <laughs> imagine. Oh boy, imagine me actually playing this game. Right. <laughs> no, it's a green for me. Never played it. Uh, Shin Megami Tensei Four. 
Wait, didn't we do four earlier? I we did was four one earlier, but this was another version of four, I believe. I believe they're using the same characters from four, but it's a different story. Oh, so it's, 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 is that technically a sequel then? Yes, probably. Oh, oh, man. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, again, still haven't played Big Chin Guy. Next up is nine. Oh. Uh, it's nine. I don't know what that is, so gr green for me. Green for me. All right. And then, in, and then in the sea of the JRPGs, depression, and edgy themes, you have Snowboard, Snowboard Kids. Snowboard Kids 2, which I played. Definitely an upgrade from the first game. They don't even have the first game there. Yeah, I sort of noticed, but whatever. I, I guess, guess they, they don't. I guess they don't want to talk about the first one. <laughs> Hypothetically, where would you put the first one on this list? Hypothetically, C. C. Okay. So where does Dose go? A. Okay. Cool. Is that good of a series? It did a lot better. It did a lot better than the original. I will tell you that because in the original. The AI is fucking bonkers. It will try to kick your ass immediately. They don't play. Even on easy mode, they don't play around either. Two kind of fixed that a little bit. It was like, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. We made this for kids, not for professionals. What the <laughs> hell were you guys thinking? These kids are going to hate the series. We have to make a sequel right now to fix this. Uh, Devil Summoner, Soul Hackers. I already told you I felt about this game. Yes, I'm being, I'm not played, so I'm I'm green. It's a low C for me. Again, I did not, no, just I, okay. I didn't vibe with it. It wasn't great for me. I kind of just, I, I like I said, yeet. Um, e? Shin Megami Tensei: Strange Journey, another strange journey. How many more strange journeys could you have? There's so much spin-offs. Uh, spin yeah, oh wait, this is the oh really wait, fun. this is the one before. Uh, this is the re yeah. Strange Journey Redux is the remake to Strange Journey for the DS. Okay. Okay. Now I played this Tokyo Mirage Sessions. I Effie. Play the rest, I kind of know this. I I played this too, so I have a few words to say about it. Go too. for it, Matt. Okay, so this good game. My um. This game is turbulent uh, for me. It had to do with censorship issues. Again, it's it's not it's not about her vagina bones. It's just the fact that I don't like censorship. And boy howdy, this game this game was censored the world over. I don't. I, was Treehouse involved in this? I don't want to point false flags here, but was Treehouse involved in this? I, I way, think I so. But uh, uh yep, also, per, I think did you play? Did you play Encore so though? Well, I was I was gonna get onto that. So Encore, I mainly haven't played Encore. So you can take half my opinion on this um so this game yes elvis is right this game is not dubbed so i'm striking a few other points from it overall this game um so this this is was supposed to be fire emblem cross tokyo mirage sessions or shimigami tensei it is way more shimigami tensei than fire emblem and i'm a much bigger fire emblem fan than shimigami tensei even though i just lauded three to uh but i'm a much bigger fire emblem fan and fire emblem's barely there it's just sort of the side summonable personas are just per fire emblem characters essentially and they sort of dress up as them when they when they sing transform it's it's way more smt lopsided and that's fine for smt fans but i I was more of the Fire Emblem fan, so I'm like, uh, that, it wasn't a, it wasn't a fair slice of cake on 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 the on the FE side. Now overall about the game, yeah, it's an all right, it's an all right JRPG. Uh, one knock I have to give it though, since it's subbed only, they don't give you subtitles during battles, so you can't understand what they're saying during battles. I just use my best intuition. I just I make my own fan subs. Fuck, dude. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, yeah, I have to make I have to not knock against that because they don't sub the battle. I don't know what they're saying. Um, but besides that, the battle system itself, yeah, it's, it's pretty okay. Use an attack against system, a once more system as usual. It's fine. Now, about the actual music itself, since this game is technically a musical too. Um, it's corny. It's yep. cheesy. Oh, God. Uh, so, uh, Super, Super Saiyan Marth was making memes when it was first revealed <laughs> at the, the end of the game when they sing Fire Emblem and they fly up to the final <laughs> boss battle. It took um, a lot of inspiration from, like, anim, uh, Idol Girls or something, right? Yeah, but I like the Idol Girls better. This is just is cheesy and kind of awkward. So overall, over again, now again, I'm the guy who talks about anime ass, but even then, I have to admit, this is, this is like a little, like, cover my face in embarrassment cheesy. Overall, I'm gonna give this, oop, I'm gonna give this game a C. 
it's overall okay, but boy, howdy, I was not pleased in multiple directions. If with we this had game. Encore here, I would have given it a B because they fixed so much from it, from the original version that was for the Wii U. They fixed mm. a lot in Encore. Um, what did they fix? Because I haven't played Encore. So if you don't mind, I want to hear your little side of things, if you do not mind. So there's a, your podcast. <laughs> there, is a, there is a list of things that I have to look over on that because that was a big one, but FE and FE the encore differences i know for a fact that some of them were uh some of the stuff was more uncensored so that was a start okay but okay. it's based on I the thought, i thought encore just okay but yeah, yeah yeah uh so here we go tokyo mirage sessions fe encore is based on the censored version of the game which actually led to cancellations in japan the cut dlc including swimsuit outfits for several of the female members of the cast which won't be available in yeah. tokyo fe encore so that was technically the other shit that happened so yeah essentially the differences that messed up so many things that happened uh new options in battle and a new song so there's new options uh okay. new costumes including the phantom thieves from persona 5 are in this one yeah um but they 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 heavily censored everything and it pissed me off yeah yeah exactly yeah it's, again it's not about if her vagina if you actually look up again i'm not just memeing well yeah. i'm memeing if you look up tokyo mirage sessions and vagina bones you'll actually get search results on articles specifically talking about that one song in the game where they censored her pelvis <laughs> i just think that's just funny vagina what vagina bones if you actually looked it up on google with tokyo mirage sessions you'll actually get actual articles like legitimately verbatim talking about it <laughs> you you know something's fucked up there <laughs> when <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's yes. just funny it's just it's just it's a hilarium it's just delirium but anyway yeah oh because so you agree yeah, you agree with me on the censorship okay cool 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 also we I mean, say that it was that badly censored then yeah screw that game also um there i believe they also let me double check this i just want to not say this verbatim and then piss off some tokyo mirage fan on <laughs> on the episode when it finally goes into youtube at some Syn point syndication <laughs> Maybe let me say something. Sorry. Just saying, yeah. huh? I think they announced the English dub three years ago. Oh wait, really? Hold on, is it? Hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. Tokyo Mirage Session Encore. Can you change the English voices? Answered. Are there English? Unfortunately, it's not possible to change to an English voice track at all in Tokyo Mirage Encore. While this is the first time that the game has officially released in the West, Nintendo and Atlas have decided to stick with all the characters speaking Japanese in the cutscenes. Of course, that doesn't mean you're going to be left clueless as to what is going on. Main dialogue is all subtitled for you to break. Um, is all subtitled for you or broken down in text boxes as part of in-game engine conversations rather than flashy CGI cutscenes. Hmm. Except in battle, but yeah. It just means you'll hear the original Japanese voiceover in any cutscene, which will be subsided. Of course, it's not going to be in battle. That's the sad it's part. Okay. Yeah, except in battle. I'm, yeah, I'm not, and I'm not biased towards this game. Another game in my favorite series, Blaze Blue, does this too. Yeah. The fourth Blaze Blue game was never dubbed, so when you when the characters meet in battle and they do their intro, they don't sub them in battle either. So I'm like, thanks. I don't know what Ragnar and Jin are saying anymore. Thank you. <laughs> I just realized they don't have that game that had like the three different series in there, right? The uh, Blaze Blue Cross, Second Cross. That's no, because that's not. Well, that's not really Atlas. Yeah. That, that's Arc Systems. Arc Systems oh, is okay. secondly in charge of that, have, and also you got to remember, Arc Systems only had like four four to five Persona characters in the game. So technically speaking, you also got to remember that Under the Night was under that game, Blaze Blue was under that game, and even Ruby was under that game. Yeah, Ruby was just out of nowhere. I think Ruby was like something to get kind of popular, so they put them in the game or something. Yeah. All right, Trauma Center. Now we're really going in on here, on this game. Yeah. Yay. Go. So we'll start with Trauma Center New Blood. So I haven't, so go first? Blood. Oh. I haven't played New Blood, so I'll take a backseat to this one. All right. I think this is the one that TTK brought into one of the meetups because it's actually multiplayer. and it's Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah It's yeah. good because it has actual voice acting on it, so that's pretty good. It does. There's Troy two Baker characters in the, the game. I believe. Well, the main Troy Baker. He, you push yeah. your parent, he says he's very popular. You, um, you could say that. <laughs> Okay, uh, it's like I, the times I play with uh, him is pretty fun. I actually got stuck into the story a little bit, honestly, because I, when I was playing it, Rob was like, "Can you like start the game already?" I was like, "Oh fuck, right!" And I just skipped the story. So the Trouble is a good series. Um, I think maybe we'll, when we get to Lock on a River, I'll try to find these games, even though I they got the they got my damn Wii here, but 
I would give this a. I mean, have a, I guess I haven't beat myself, but I'm gonna give it a B. I multiplayer is good. I actually agree with you on a B because uh, I played Second Opinion. Yes, and second tell you about this and one. Second Opinion did a lot better than New Blood, so I would put it an A as my grade. But you that's can say yeah. that's, that's first. That's the first. So game. yeah, so yeah, Trauma Center Second Opinion. Yes, I have. I have played this one. I, I met uh, Vespi still remembers my funny playthrough, Bob Blind playthrough this three years ago. Yeah, playing this game was very interesting. When I went into this game, I only played it through one. The story's funny because you read the instruction manual. It says in 2018 a virus took over the world. That's fucking hilarious in hindsight. They're off by two years. <laughs> They're off by two years. But if you look at the instruction manual, it says a virus has taken over the world in 2018. Boy, howdy. If they going? ever remaster or remake this game, they probably can't say that. No, they'll say so it. Gonna be like, they'll say it. It's fiction. They'll say it. You can't fiction. be ashamed of saying things yeah. in fiction. Quote, unquote, fiction. Don't, 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 don't. Got, Come on, Elvis. They, yeah. they got rid of like a SpongeBob episode because it was about a pandemic, right? right well, that something you missed me? <sighs> What a pain in the neck. Yes. Anyway, uh, this game. Anyway, this game. Um, I was actually shocked how hard this game was. Now, I consider myself a Wiimote expert. I played my fair share of Wii Play, and I like Skyward Sword, and I, could, I consider myself a big aficionado of using Wiimote Nun Controls. I was surprised how tense this game makes you, what oh, all yeah. the stuff this makes you do. Like my Wiimote setup is decently comfortable. Wow, they make you they make you race in the nick of time for surgeries. Ironically enough, though, th I thought this is, I, th I thought this game wasn't going to be easy per se. But I didn't I didn't expect this game to be this hard. I had to stay up till four in the morning beating the last surgery and beating one extreme challenge in the optional surgery menu. The bomb the, surgery is insane. The bomb was oh, and the Dorito surgery. Oh my god, the green the Dorito the, surgery. The, 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 so there's this other type of guilt later on in the game where it looks like a bunch of triangles linked together with Dorito. Doritos, and you have to pull out these pins in a certain pattern order that makes sense to how the Doritos line up. And if you get it wrong, it spreads worse. And it's it, it's I, I made a thumbnail about this once with Aqua's screaming face over it <laughs> from Konosuba. Anyway, uh, this game this game slaps. It's an easy solid A for me. I, yeah, I, I love it. Game. It got me yeah. into the series, and it also has a lot of anime fucking goodness with corny with with good cheesy anime writing. It's basically like Persona if it was a puzzle-ish game or something. All right, next up no. is. Trauma like, team. Moving along. <laughs> I have not played this one. This one's a green for me. This is a green for me. I haven't played either, but I've seen videos about it because like, I got interested in some of the Trauma City games. I think this one has like four players in it, so... That's fine. And I think it's more like... I mean, I guess we're playing it. I see videos because I really want to get more yeah, into the series. Yeah, again, but yeah. again, you haven't experienced the game. There's a I difference between saying. experiencing the game... I'm watching someone else play yes, sir, it. Sorry. Oh no, I'm not saying that you're bad. I'm just saying I just want to like make that clear because I want you to play more games, Jesus. That's me saying play more games. There you go. I got master duel. I'm kidding. <laughs> with, with, with master duel, no way. <laughs> I gotta sp I, I gotta spend my money. I my All lines. right. <laughs> so do you want to handle OG under the knife or under the knife two first? Uh, we're gonna handle uh, OG under OG the knife. OG is a bit different from the remake because I think the missions are different. Well, they're like, not almost well, completely different. Well, so I, as someone who went on to play these two DS games after I became a Trauma Center fan, yeah, the first game's a little different because the second game has an expanded story with an extra chapter. The first game ends after five, eight, or five, whatever it was. It, the, 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 the second, the the remastered Wii version has a six chapter, which expands the story and is, and, is, and is more canon now. But I digress. Anyway, for being the OG, haha. Ha, any surgery game yet? Yeah, it's pretty all right. The character designs are very uh, rugged, though. I, so I've heard I've heard some Trauma Center fans argue that the the the, the new anime s style ones are a little too anime s, but these old styles are very rugged. While it, they sort of have a sort of like a norm charm to them, if I'm quoting TV tropes, uh, the the old the old style of them are very rugged. I definitely prefer the new style. But anyway, so, like, is it I don't... difficult to play this game because it's very. This one's literally just a stylus. It's just a stylus. It's just just like the Wii one is just the Wii mode. It's just you just substitute one for the other with your right hand. I have like it's just I, I see videos that people have to use two stylus, one for like the pick it tools and one for like the actual. Well, no, thing. that's for speedrunning. Speedrunners use two styluses. Yes. But anyway, I digress. Anyway, yeah, uh, uh, this one can probably get. <laughs> a, I'd almost give it an A too, but no, I can get a B because no. A is just the better. Remaster. I give it a high B. <laughs> Like, yeah, it's a high B. There's no the Wii is really... more fun to use than the stylus. Also, yeah, it's also very easily streamable yeah. better. But yes, I digress. Under All the right, knife so two. our last game, Under the Knife 2. So, I, I'm i actually going to compare this game to the Phoenix Wright... Why are you hovering over C? <laughs> 
Uh, I'm going to compare this game to the Phoenix Wright series. So the first game stars a doctor who becomes a master surgeon, just like Phoenix Wright 1 stars a lawyer who who, who becomes a master lawyer. Per, well, master S lawyer, by the way. Really so I mean, he defeats an undefeatable lawyer. opponent, Elvis, all right? Anyway, <laughs> I digress. So how do you make a sequel starring the same doctor? Uh, have have another again. It's almost like the JRPG argument I set up earlier. Have you make the same main character go through another rising action, falling action, and have obstacles and difficulties overcome? Well, he does. There's actually a big t- turning point in the story when he messes up. But anyway, uh, anyway, I really like the story of two. Uh, Derek and Angie become a lot closer. There are some things I don't like about the story too, but I like the I like the villain of two a lot, and that final surgery is fucking awesome. I like it actually better than the final surgery of Trauma Center 1. Especially like, with, 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 with the, well, yeah, I know I can. But anyway, the final surgery with Alethea, and, and, you, and you, she has the eight fucking like strings on her, and you have to cut them all, slow down time while the course is going, oh, that's fucking great. <laughs> Anyway, because so, I was curious about the final boss. It's like fucking eye anyway, in your stomach. Um, anyway, uh, I maybe overall like the first game better, but as a sequel, it does its job really well. I think it's actually a really cool sequel. I I would give it. I would still give it an A or maybe even a high B personally. But Hito, what's your take on it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not putting it in D. I was joking. Um, okay, I was gonna say. Um, no, this will definitely go in the A for me because this one did have the extra okay. content go into it. I did like okay. two a lot better, and okay, it definitely I, I knew, cleaned up. I knew up. you had to be trolling me. I knew you had to be trolling. <laughs> no, me, I'm gonna God. put it in D because I just feel like it. And uh, games? that like is our that is yeah, our tier list. DS. That is our I tier list. I overtake your entire opinion on Trauma Center 2. Do you ultimately, like, agree with me? Or... Oh, no, I agree with you. Okay. you. You said everything I wanted to say. Oh, okay. I'm sorry I overtook everything. Oh, no, you're fine. I, uh, I appreciate I you going into it. Was it ex- is it an expensive gate to buy the Trauma Center no. games? Well, tra- well, you don't have to buy Trauma Center 1 on DS because we always have the Wii version. The Wii version is still, like, you can get it for, like, $17 or $18. That's fine. Uh, Trauma Center 2, it's, it runs you about late in the mid-20s. It's it's still a okay. decently affordable game. Hence why it's I'm going to see if I can find these in Long Island Retro to play because I've barely played the Trauma Center games, but I do know about them, and I actually have played a majority of it, but i never beaten it. I've had enough like I've had enough too. gameplay to actually understand the game and go I'm gonna into be, it. I'm going to be 100 honest. I was getting small balls and small dick when you were hovering around B or C. I'm like maybe I'll just go high B, but no, you were teasing me the whole time. No, I actually <laughs> meant A. Jo- D- 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 Reggie Johns aside, I meant A. Please, no Johns. <laughs> no, I meant A. No, 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 no. no, no. I, the only reason I was, I was listening to you, I was like, okay, what else are you saying? Yeah, cool. Okay, done. <laughs> You, you yuckster, you. All right. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> final opinions on Atlas games, guys. Uh, ever since I... becoming a fan of them way later in my life, yeah, I'm definitely going to play more as soon as I can. Okay. And I got to play more. When, when Atlas does branch away from JRPGs, they also have a handful of other good styles of games. Like, you said you liked the, um, well, Snowboard Kids is good, too. And what was that other Atlas-style game that branched away? Catherine. Catherine. You like the puzzle aspect of Catherine. And I, and we all like the um, the the motion puzzle slash, uh, I guess, I guess Trauma Center is a puzzle game. The motion puzzles of Trauma Center. It's a simulator so game. No, it's not. Simu- simulator no, it's not. and puzzle. Yeah, well... <laughs> It's an anime simulator and puzzle game of motion controls. Uh, but yeah, but ultimately, yeah, when Atlas breaks away from JRPGs, they, they have some gold too. Maybe it doesn't sell as well as they maybe hoped because Trauma Center is unfortunately a sort of dead in the water series, but maybe one day, who knows? One day. But either way, they, Atlas, Atlas, Atlas got some good chops in other genres too, besides just JRPGs. So yeah. I'll definitely do it. Uh, Mecha Dragon. My next piece? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, by all means, yeah. It's, well, this just shows I need to play more games, honestly. Yes. Like, more Shin Megami Tensei games, especially... I suppose they... Did we talk about the fifth one? Give Master oh, Duel a yeah. break. Oh, yeah, the fifth one was an on here. I like, 30 minutes a day. Wait, that, that that's... Cr- actually, no, Elvis is 100% right. I was waiting for the fifth one. I totally forgot about it. Uh, that was recent. Really. Where would you put the it fifth was... one if it was here? Uh, probably, probably a low B. I, di- I didn't like it as much as three. It's only a fine game of one. I wanted to come to other systems. Yep. Uh, the Switch chugs at loading it, but I digress. Uh, you so mean to Switch. I, I'm not going to be... Oh, you did make a good point, honestly. I'm not going to be over mean to Switch, but ultimately, uh, I like Debbie Fiend as a better main character, I but I, I did, and immediately I didn't beat 
five yet on Switch, but I did play it a handful of hours, a lot of hours. But ultimately, no, I give it to three as my favorite SMT game. I'll give five of a B. I want to come to other systems, though. But you make a good point. A lot of the Shimmy games are already on one console. I think four is only on 3DS, though. For right? now, yeah. Yeah. So, like, if they. Because if the Persona games get popular on the consoles, maybe they'll port them in other systems. Like, I think Nocturne was on. I mean, other yeah, I mean, too, well, right? yeah, well, the remaster of Nocturne is on PS4, Switch, and Steam. So, yeah, they're, they're, they're slowly dipping their toes. So, yeah, like I said earlier, it just shows they need to play more games, especially the Persona and the Shimmy Game Intensity games. Well, but... you, know, you, you know, your next task is the Beat Strikers. Yes. I, I, I fucking hyped the shit out of that game. And I love that you, game. Yeah, you just, it suck as kids. It's one of the greatest help. JRPG sequels of all time. And I say that as a JRPG aficionado. Yeah, all right, I'll play it tonight, even though I'll probably shoot <laughs> oh, a bed. I'm that, a first of all, that's going to be, that's gonna be uh, yeah, I was going to say, one, that's 100% live, but anyway, Hito, we can wrap this I'll, baby I'll, up. I, I will, I will uh, come over. I was, gonna, gonna, I was actually going to say. Not you, uh, I'm not giving you orders, but Elvis and I will two-stooge our act for hours unless you wrap <laughs> us up. <laughs> Um, anyway, yeah, that's I like to say that opinion. Atlas. It just means I need to play more of those games. I would like to say that Atlas is kind of the underdog when it comes to a lot of games. They have some very good hits. They have their main series hit, which is the Persona slash Shen Megami Tensei series. However, they can always go off screen, so that shows that they have the versatility to do a lot. But they need to start trusting their versatility more, because the more that they trust their versatility, the more hits they will end up making in that situation. So, yeah, definitely believe that would work. Um, yeah, but Atlas games are the underdog when it comes down to it, and, you know, it works really well at the end of the day. I love the games that they made, and honestly, I do want to play a lot more when it comes down to it, because if I get the chance to play more games like that, then I'll definitely be putting up a lot of love for it later on down the line. So, as always, guys, this is Hito Retro Gaming giving you guys the 8-bit love. 8-bit love, y'all. Thanks for coming over, you guys. Bye! Bye. And bye. Love y'all. Uh, Aqua, my body pillow, say goodnight. <laughs>